wants to keep the ball out of Baylor's hands. We understand that. Rice has won the toss, and they have, of course, elected to receive. So they will get the ball here to start. Spencer Evans out to kick it away for Baylor. Austin Walter and Luke Turner are back for Rice in the final non-conference game of the season for Baylor. Perfect 2-0 to start the year. This is Austin Walter from the goal line. Stumbles out to about the 20-yard line, and that is where Rice will take over as we take a look at the key players for when Rice has the football this afternoon. Well, you're going to see four different running backs today, but Jawan Davis right now, to me, the senior, is a the guy they can really trust. And Dennis Parks is their big play wide receiver with 16 catches in the last two games. Yeah, and defensively for Baylor, Andrew Billings, big number 75, is virtually unblockable in one-on-one. -on -one. He causes a ton of havoc, and they welcome back Taylor Young, the, the linebacker that's been out since the SMU game where you hurt his shoulder. He is a spark plug for this defense. So Dreyfus Jackson is the quarterback for the Rice Owls. 29 of 39 a week ago, and he gives it to Austin Walter, who got to the edge and is dragged out of bounds, but not before he got out across the 35-yard line. Give him 18 yards. Well, they don't want to run inside, and Andrew Billings and Sean Oakman, so they got it to the perimeter on that play, and that's what they want to do. They want to mix it up. This is a team that's running 700, 272 yards a game right now. That's what they'd like to do, control it on the ground. They have four options at running back that they feel are interchangeable. We're going to look at all four of them at some point here this afternoon. Two of them are on the field with Jackson right now. And the ball handed off to Sam Stewart. And he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Well, you go back to that first play. Baylor's really been hurt on the edge. I think Rice, when we talked to their coaches, they really feel like they can exploit the edges. Even though they have a big interior front, they have really big defensive ends. They think they can collapse that down and find the perimeter. We're going to see what they got this first series. First play outside, second play inside. And they just substituted three new players coming on. It's Larry Edmondson, the offensive coordinator, is taking his time right now, getting everybody lined up. Wait for Dreyfus Jackson to get the right play. And let the play clock run down. They're going to have to take a time out here. They still had about six seconds left on the play clock, but Rice takes a timeout here after running just a couple of plays. Well, and we talk about tempo. Rice, the last two games, 93 plays. They can go just as fast as Baylor. And to be on the third play and have to take a timeout, that doesn't bode well for what they want and their game plan. They want to keep Baylor's defense second-guessing to get misaligned. So not good that you've taken early timeout. And there was confusion on that, Brandon. I mean, you can see Dennis Parks was racing, was, was throwing his arms up in the air like, we, we should be better than this. We know what we're doing here. Yet there was confusion, and you get a lot of that when you get young players on the road in this type of atmosphere. Just a couple of weeks ago, Rice was in a similar type of atmosphere in Texas. A game that they really controlled and dominated. Too many turnovers, turned the ball over five times. Had a chance to win that game, but shot themselves in the foot. Trying to redeem themselves here against the number five team in the country on the road here in Waco. Second and ten for Jackson. Had the time, and he's able to get it off. Complete to Dennis Parks. Look at Parks. Down to the 30 of Baylor. Well, Dennis Parks is their big play receiver, and that time, Dreyfus Jackson had time. Excellent job by the offensive line because that wasn't his first read. You're going to see Dreyfus Jackson able to step up into the pocket right here. Short pass to Parks, long run after the catch. And they're really going to attack that inside with those pivot routes. You're going to see a lot of Dennis Parks today. 40-yard pickup there on second down, and they go forward with Juwan Davis for a couple of more. You can see and feel that tempo that we talked about. Had that timeout, now a big play. They're going to get lined up real quick. Defense does not have a lot of time to get a line, get their assignments, and go through their checks because Rice is going to keep the ball moving. Although I say that, and they're kind of slowing things down with the personnel change. And it has prevented Baylor from substituting at all on these initial plays. It's the same starting defense that began this drive. They subbed off Juwan Davis, who had that last carry. Austin Walter now in the backfield. Baylor jumped right there in front of you guys. Calvin Anderson, the left tackle, the rook, redshirt freshman who they're very high on. Got an assignment of Sean Oakman out in front of him. <laughs> he wanted an early jump. Well, he had Oakman and, and he had Taylor Young. Defense number one. Got into the neutral zone, causing the offense to react. Five-yard penalty, second down. And I 
talked about Taylor Young coming back from the shoulder injury against SMU. He's hungry. He's excited. Obviously, he wants to get out there and make some plays, but he have to watch the ball. Look like he was coming on a blitz, but he's got to be more patient. Yeah, Phil Bennett, very happy to have Taylor Young back. Referred to him as the best player on the defense, a great inspirer and a great leader for them. And he did miss the game against Lamar two weeks ago. Baylor coming in off the bye week. They're only one on the schedule. Handoff goes nowhere. And then Dreyfus Jackson, excuse me, kept it and able to get through for a few yards. Give him three on the play. I think that's one thing that you'll see more today from Dreyfus Jackson is running the ball. They said they want him to run, but they want to protect him too. They want him for the whole season. He has had injuries in his first couple of seasons. Rice will face their first third down, and this is the best third down team in the country. Actually, you take it back. They've given them the first down on that short game. I don't take it back. They are still the best third down team in the country. But they won't have the opportunity here. It is first and 10 from the 17. Couple of spin moves, nowhere to go for Juwan Davis. Loss of three wrapped up by big Sean Oakman. Well, Sean Oakman's really got to thank Andrew Billings. I talked about him earlier. Big number 75 in the middle. One of the strongest guys in college football. Just absolutely collapsed that hole. Nowhere for the running back to run. And Sean Oakman's there to clean it up. Oakman is 6'9", 275. Juwan Davis, the guy he tackled, listed at 5'7", and 195 pounds. He's still on the field with Jackson. And Rice in no particular hurry. And held the ball last week for over 41, almost 42 minutes. Jackson to throw. Looking towards the end zone, the overthrows Connor Sella. Well, Connor Sella was a big target last week uh, in their win against North Texas with five catches. They put a lot of tight ends into the National Football League. And Dreyfus Jackson just missed him right here. He's double covered. Maybe he should have gone to the other side, Ben, where Dennis Parks had one-on-one -on -one coverage. Well, I, th I think he saw Grant Campbell, number five. They got him with the hard count. He was coming on an edge rush, and he decided to just throw it up and see if he can get something and find a mismatch. So here is that first third down opportunity for Rice. Over 67% success rate. They're 37 for 55. That's by far the best team in the country. Navy is second. They've only completed 16. And another timeout taken by Rice. I mean, it's an important play here, but two timeouts taken on the first possession for the Rice Owls. Well, you have to think immediately that this crowd noise is awfully loud down here. This crowd noise has got to these guys. Dreyfus Jackson is trying to go out there and communicate with his wide, wide receivers, but nobody's listening, kind of arms up in the air, not understanding what he's trying to say. Guys can't get lined up, so they can't run their tempo offense. Well, you guys are, are right in there. How loud is it for you guys down on the field? Oh, it's awfully loud now. I mean, you can feel the, the noise a lot of times in the booth. You, you get The noise gets drowned out because you're away from it, but down here on the field, that Baylor line, those young students are super loud. And you can see Dreyfus in this offense is having a hard time communicating across the board. And Brandon, really, when Dreyfus Jackson is in the backfield and the running back is right next to him, he can't get the running back to get lined up right for protection. And just to make matters worse, they are driving right towards the Baylor marching band. Third and 13 from the Baylor 20. Still more confusion. A shrug of the shoulders there from Jackson. Here they come. Jackson steps up and throws this one out of the back of the end zone. Oh, he had Parks, and he couldn't get it to him. Oh, Brendan, he had Dennis Parks, too, behind Ryan Stewart, the safety. He had exactly what he wanted, but the pressure up front didn't allow him to set his feet that time. But, boy, their big play receiver was open right in front of me here in the end zone. Well, you got to give credit a little bit to the offense line. Give him a little bit of time, but they collapsed late. Forced that throw. Keep in mind, this Rice offensive line has been shuffled around. Injuries, guys banged up, and they're going against one of the best defensive lines in the Big 12. Rice with more confusion, trying to just get the field goal unit out there. Didn't even have enough guys on the line. This is not an easy shot. 37 yards for a guy who's never kicked a field goal in a collegiate game yet in his life. And from 37 yards out, Hayden Tabola, a walk-on true freshman, puts it through and gives Rice the early lead. 
Well, when we talk about they have to get some points if they're going to go on long drives, typically they're 10, 12, 15 play drives. They had to burn two timeouts, which is not what they wanted, but they got three points out of it. Made it to ball. Able to put his team on the board from 37 yards out. It took nine plays, but they get three points out of it. Timeouts in order to get those three points for Dreyfus Jackson and the Rice Owls. We're about to see Baylor's offense for the first time. Yes, this one is kicked away by Jack Fox, another true freshman kicker. We'll put it out of the back of the end zone as we get a chance to look at our key players for when the Baylor Bears have the football, guys. Man, we talk about this Baylor offense, and it all revolves around the receivers. I'm going to talk about Corey Coleman and Katie Cam, but I can't be remiss not to talk about Jay Lee. He's a fantastic receiver as well. But these two guys, Corey Coleman and Katie Cannon, speed, speed, speed. They make big plays all day long. And for Rice defense, they're led by the middle linebacker, Alex Lyons, who's got to stop a powerful running attack inside. And on the outside, I'm going to look at V.J. Banks today, a guy that Baylor thought that they wanted to recruit. He's got to handle some of these wide receivers and that speed that we talk about every time you do a Baylor game. This is a big game for Seth Russell, a bounce-back game for him in the big win against Lamar a couple of weeks ago. The quarterback hands it off this time. And that pile just continues to move. And ultimately, it winds up going for six yards in the hands of Shock Linwood. And don't be surprised that you think Baylor just passes the ball all the time. Last year, they, were, they had 235 yards rushing on average per game, so they do like to put the ball on the ground. Quick snap, quick throw, quick completion to Corey Coleman. Shoved out of bounds by J.P. Thompson. And they do get the first down. Yeah, I mean, in every year that Art Bryles has been here, they have run the ball more than they have thrown it. So it is a huge misnomer nationally to think that Baylor just comes out and throws the ball. Flag comes in at the end of the shock. Linwood run as his feet kind of came out from underneath him. And we will hear from Mike DeFree, our referee in today's contest. Offside. Defense, number 57. Player was lined up in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty. Replay first down. Defensive tackle, Preston Gordon. Well, you take away that penalty, and Rice did exactly what they want to do. Just get lined up. You can see just getting lined up, having Tabari McGaskey in the hole was there to make the tackle. That's what they have to do with this quick-paced offense. They go right back to Linwood as he gets to the outside and then able to step across the 50 down to about the 46-yard line as Baylor continues to push the base and take a look at the clock. 15 yards on that one as they get back to the line of scrimmage and look to get the ball back in the hands of Seth Russell. Well, their backs are averaging almost eight yards every time they touch it in the first two games this year. Less than 16 seconds, and again, a quick release, and Coleman, yards after catch, gets to the 35 of Rice. Nine-yard pickup for the Baylor wide receiver. Well, Corey Coleman, anytime he hits his hands on the ball, he's a guy that can take it the distance because of his speed and his fluidness. Direct snap to Johnny Jefferson. He only needed about a yard, but he did not get it. Swallowed up there by Parker Hanusa, the redshirt freshman. He saw his first action last week. You know, it's so important for this Rice defense to come out on this first series and show that they cannot get pushed around. They are smaller up front height and weight-wise, but they play awfully tough and very fierce style of football. So it's imperative that these guys get out here and hit these Baylor offensive linemen in the mouth to send a message. First third down for Baylor. No problem for Jefferson. First down as he gets to the 26. A nine-yard game. It doesn't matter what back that they plug in. We'll see Terrence Williams, number 22 today. Shock Linwood. And oh, along with Jefferson, we'll see three different backs rotating in. Brendan Burke up here at the booth. Ed Lieber down the field with Brian Baldinger and Katie Cannon down on the field and in the back of the end zone for a touchdown. Try and keep up with Katie Cannon. 26 yards on a touchdown. Right, you talked about the two receivers, Ben, and KD Cannon just running by us right here. Ran right by and exploded to that ball. They exploded that ball, and they did exactly what their game plan was. We got to lower you to sleep a little bit with the run, but then they get impatient because they want to take shots and they want to score quick. So expect to see that throughout the football game. Dink and dunk here and there, and then go over the top to a safety that's biting down the play action. What did Art Bryles tell us? He says, every game, I'm going to score eight touchdowns. Not two, three, four, but eight touchdowns every game. 
56-0 is the goal for Baylor every single week. Extra point is good. That is the 11th touchdown for Baylor from outside 20 yards away. K.D. Cannon, just his second touchdown of the season. I think we'll see a few more. Before the 25 yards, a two-minute drive, and a perfect drive for Seth Russell. Three for three for 39 yards and a pretty even split between running and passing yardage on that first drive. For Baylor, Austin Walter will take it from the one-yard line. And gets a hole out to the 30, and he's still on his feet before taken down at the 34-yard line. Let's go back to that touchdown for KD Cannon. He had all sorts of room. Well, you see the problem going against Baylor's offense is the fact that they can run the ball so effectively. They can pound it and pound it and pound it. A little bit of a play action. And they get the safeties to drop down, and KD Cannon, just the inside route, such an easy throw for Seth Russell. You can't defend that speed when you got to look at the run. And Zach Espinosa was a slot defender on that play, and he just gave him the inside. Thinking maybe, maybe he thought he was safety help, but those safeties are looking at the run game like you mentioned, Ben. Cannon only had a couple of catches two weeks ago against Lamar. Got him a little more involved here today. Give this to Jawan Davis, who fights to the 35-yard line, a pickup of two. I'm just watching Andrew Billings inside, the massive defensive tackle, one of the strongest players in the country, just getting physical inside with the center right now of Rice and take it to him after the play as well. well I don't know if you saw that Jawan Davis, not very big, 5'7", 195, just put a left arm right in the bow Blackshear's chest and threw him on the ground to redirect. That was impressive. Second and eight for Trifus Jackson and the Owls. And Davis in motion in an empty backfield. All four receivers at the bottom of the screen. And he can't get away. The big arm of the big man. Sean Oakman brings him down. Well, Sean Oakman just collapsed Calvin Anderson, the redshirt freshman left tackle right here, and just collapsed the pocket. And then used some of those long arms at 6'9 to grab Dreyfus and simply couldn't get him out of the grasp. And I think right there, Brennan, he may be two sacks away from the Baylor sack record right now. But yeah. well, what's impressive about that is he's 6'9 and he is working on his leverage. It's hard to get a 6'9 body down like that. But, it, but against Calvin Anderson, he did just that and bull rushed him right into the quarterback. Second sack of the season, 15th sack of the career for Sean Oakman, who has tied the school record. Jackson, he's got time this time as a flag comes in. And Jackson will try and tuck it and go. Tried to give himself up, but he jammed on the brakes and took a hit near the sideline. Looks like you're going to get a hold on Oakman. This could be a hold, and Baylor should decline. Holy. Offense, number 66. That penalty's declined. Fourth down. Well, we just talked about Oakman bull rushing Calvin Anderson, and then he comes right back with some speed. It's a great job of setting up the next rush using power, next time using speed. And Calvin right now, a young guy, he's a redshirt freshman, he's going to have his hands full all game long. They may have to give him some help here. Then they can't probably keep one-on-one -on -one like that on the edge. Yeah, absolutely. Whether it's another tight end, whether they bring a running back to chip, now you have to get creative offensively and add some protection. James Faramond out for the punt. And exactly what David Bailiff doesn't want with a three and out for Rice. Corey Coleman avoids the first hit and now has lots of room. Coleman dances. Flags are behind the play as Coleman gets the escort to the end zone. If it stands, it'll be a 73-yard punt return. During the return, illegal block in the back, return team number 14. Foul being forced 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Baylor's ball first and 10. Timeout. Kendall Elricks block in the back, takes points off the boards for Baylor. Still 7-3, Baylor ball. Baylor's lead could have been more if it wasn't for a penalty on that punt return. Yeah, you see Kendall Ehrlich right there got an illegal block in the back. If you can see the number, you got to lay off. Another good look at it on that play. 
but it was still an exciting run by Corey Coleman to take it to the house, but it's going to back Baylor up here to start this drive. Well, and the key on that penalty, too, is that the referees are looking to the body angle which the, the would-be tackler falls, and he fell straight forward and clear blocking the back. Russell will fling it over to Jay Lee, one-on-one -on, -one on the sideline, knocked out of bounds. After a 16-yard gain by JT Blasett game. You know, you can't go to sleep on Jay Lee. They've ever talks about Corey Coleman and KD Cannon, but Jay Lee is uh, a guy that can beat you deep as well. And there he is, Jay Lee. No one will get him. Touchdown, Baylor, 57 yards. I want you guys to take a look at the anticipation that Seth Russell had on this play. Alex Lyons, number four, the outside linebacker, was actually sitting in the hole. And Seth saw him, delivered the football, and delivered it perfectly on the numbers. And it's fantastic. And look at that anticipation. Unbelievable by Seth Russell. And patience by Seth to wait for Jay Lee to kind of clear into that second window before he threw it. And we marveled all along how strong his arm was. He demonstrated on that swing. Chris Callahan. Puts the extra point through and another quick drive for Baylor and another laser throw from Seth Russell. Well, and this is all experience now in the system. Look at that throw. A young quarterback that doesn't have as much confidence as Seth Russell, you don't make that throw. When Alex Lyons is sitting right there in that hook, you don't make that throw, but he trusts his receivers. He understands the body angle of, Al of Lyons, can't get there, and delivered a perfect ball. And Alex Lyons is blind. I mean, his head is turned away from the ball. So he threw it right by his ear hole there. And uh, we just talked about Jay Lee. That's his fourth touchdown catch already of the season, and we're not two and a half games old yet. These linebackers have a tough job because as you sit back in that zone, you are. You're looking for work. you got to look around you. But sometimes as you're looking left, these guys are so fast out of their breaks. They're going to come right by you. He's got to get used to the speed this Baylor receiving for. And there is no deep safety in college football where you maybe could turn it over and somebody can at least stop them at that point. There is nobody behind him at that point. drive took Baylor two minutes to score. Their second drive took 20 seconds to score, and that's only because the punt return was called back on a penalty. This one is in the direction of Walter. And eventually does get it off the field. And Austin Walter has lots of room and the kicker to beat. Walter spins around him and taken down at the 26-yard line. Davion Hall was able to bring him down. Otherwise, he was 72 yards as is. Well, he's one of the four running backs and their kickoff returner, just a redshirt freshman. But you can see the speed. Right now, Baylor's having a hard time covering the kicks. They're not getting the ball deep into the end zone right now. They're giving Rice a chance. And that's two excellent kickoff returns for the Rice Owls today by, by that young redshirt freshman. <laughs> Looking for the first time in the end zone, and he's got his man. Touchdown, Dennis Parks. The answer comes in the form of a one-play drive for the Rice Owls. No better way to answer Baylor's one-play drive than to have your own. It's set up by the Austin Walter kickoff return, but then Dennis Parks, we said, is their big play receiver. Uh, one on that quick slant that time, and Dreyfus Jackson had a beautiful lane, good protection to be able to make that throw. Aiden Tabula out for the extra point. He puts it through, and Rice comes right back down the field and closes the gap to four. David Bailiff has to be pretty happy about that. I like the way he was aggressive. Right after that big kickoff return, they went right for it. They went to Dennis Parks. He's been their big play receiver. He missed the first week of the season. He still leads the team. 17 catches and now three touchdowns. Why are more and more businesses coming to On Deck? I think a lot of people recognize that they have with Dennis Parks and Austin Howard, some of the guys that we've seen. Katie Cannon runs through a stop sign to take it out of the end zone. Flag again as he gets across the 30-yard line. 
How happy are you guys that the cloud came out for a second to give you guys a break? During the return, holding, return team number 80. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, Baylor. That's the big man. The other Correction. big man, the Half the distance McGowan. to the goal from the spot of the foul. Well, and Baldy, you talked about Dennis Parks, who's going to get a lot more action in the slot. Allows the big guy to get more, more flexibility of running his routes. And right there, just a straight uh, slant pass. Linebacker doesn't get back, and that's what he does. He'll make you pay. Ran right through that zone. You know, and really nobody got into that passing lane there. And so Dreyfus Jackson had a good look for Parks. Yeah, and Rice doesn't have the luxury of having the four, five stud receivers that Baylor does. You know the ball's going to go to Parks in the red zone. You have to get a body on him, even if you're playing that zone. I like the way they're moving around, though, to take advantage of him in different positions. Penalty backs Baylor up all the way to the nine-yard line. As you see, Laquan McGowan, six foot seven, 410 tight end in there as a blocker and a five-yard carry on first down stopped by Preston Gordon you know Laquan McGowan has gotten a lot of attention from the Cotton Bowl game when he caught a touchdown pass but he's an integral part of this offense now with Trevon Armstead being suspended big gaping hole for shock Linwood to the 25 and a first down and one of the issues that Laquan has to work through is the fact that, yes, he's 410 pounds, big, imposing guy, but he can't just get stalemated in the line. He has to move guys out of the way because his body can cause problems. Remember when we talked to Kendall Bryles, the play caller for Baylor yesterday? He said, we want to run the ball. That's what we do. We like to bounce it up. But I got to admit, I get impatient. You know, I mean, I just feel like you know, two runs in a row, maybe it's time to dial one of those big plays up. Russell of KD, or excuse me, of Corey Coleman. Something you don't necessarily see that often. Well, I think the thing that you're, you're going to see throughout this ball game is Seth Russell is getting a better understanding of his offense, but his arm strength, I don't think people realize how strong of an arm he has. The ball just kind of flies off his fingertips, and that one, he was on the far hash delivering about a 35-yard throw, and they got there in a hurry. That was his first incomplete pass on his sixth attack. There's his second as he misfired looking for Jay Lee on third down. Well, we just saw two incompletions in a row, back-to-back -back plays for Baylor. And really, on those, both those plays, he sailed the ball. I mean, both of them were high. That's just a mechanical thing. He's got to calm himself down. Because I think, you know, right now, the crowd's even a little bit impatient after how Rice just answered that last score. And he's not getting the rush. You can see Kendall Browse right now is just going to get the ball out quick. I and mean, that's what this offense is going to do. And to do that, you have to set your feet. His last two throws didn't set his feet. His mind is rushing a little bit. He needs to calm down. You thought he was calm in the first two series, but he needs to calm down here going here in the first quarter. Good hang time here from the Drew Galen's puck, and he gets it out of bounds to keep it away from Sam Stewart as well. Well, we know how good Baylor has been over the last few years, but maybe some people don't realize what Rice has done as well. Look at Texas and the best winning percentages in Texas since 2013. This is including bowl games. Rice has 20 wins. They're up there with A&M and TCU and ahead of Houston and a lot of other schools in Texas as well. Well, I think it's so impressive what David Bailiff has done, the head coach at Rice. Keep in mind, Rice is a very high academic university. It's hard to get guys admitted to the university, and they find some athletes, and they make great football players. David Bailiff doesn't want to go anywhere. He's staying right here in his home state of Texas, very proud of it. Picked up his 50th win as a Rice Owl last week against North Texas. Dreyfus Jackson looking for Parks again, and this time he overshot him. That time, Jamal Palmer turned the corner, forced uh, Dreyfus Jackson to step up. Good rush that time by Palmer. So I think Jackson was looking to go deep on the outside. Well, and that's the animal that you have to go against with this Baylor defensive line. We've talked about Oakman already, and Bo Blackshear, a big run-stuffing guy in the middle. And then you got to think about Palmer on the outside, who plays with very violent hands and can be very disruptive. Juwan Davis in the backfield with Dreyfus Jackson. He's 10 and 7 as a starter for Rice, and he'll just take off and run. Dreyfus Jackson with a little shake and bake, and he gets to the midfield, and the ball came out. At the end of the run, the ball came out. Baylor clearly has it. The question is, was he down? To me, he looked like he was on top of the tackler, 
and his body was not making contact with the ground. Yeah, they're going to give it to Baylor. The on the field. He got twisted up at the end of the play. Covered by the defense. You see, quick quarterback draw. Watch him at the end of the play. He gets twisted here, and that's when the ball gets stripped. Oh, you're right. He was laying on top of the defender, so he was never down, Ben. And a really a great play by the linebacker, Tron Blatcher, coming around and stripping that ball at the end. Well, let's not take away from the fact, though, the fact they game planned against Sean Oakman on that particular play. They knew Oakman was going to come up the field on speed, so they ran a designed quarterback run where they let him influence him up the field and then run right in that gap. So it's a great play call, just did not execute at the end. The play. Remember, they said they wanted it. They want Dreyfus to be aggressive and run. They really wanted him to slide more. He should have slid that time once he got the first down. Seth Russell will run as well, and he's got a blocker with him. Russell gets buried at the end, but he is inside the 30 down to the 27-yard line. 22 on the play from Russell. Seth Russell is a phenomenal athlete. He runs a 4-5-40. And that time, he was very patient. Only his ninth run of the year, but averaging well over eight yards a carry. And that's the other thing Kendall Bryles told us yesterday. You're going to see a lot more of him running the football this game. He'll do it again on back-to-back -back plays. And he'll take him inside the 25. Stuart Mushintoff on the tackle. And this being their last game until Big 12 action, they admitted that they did not want to run him early. They did not want to see the Big 12 opponents kind of see that game plan for that. But they also need to get the practice in game, which is the reason why they're doing it today. Also, have shot Linwood, who knows how to run the ball as well. First down near the 10 yard line for Baylor coming. Chuck Linwood is a guy that just doesn't go down easily. He doesn't go down with one tackler. He's always looking to spin and gain those extra yards. So they give him a first down at the 11 yard line. The first trip inside the red zone as we get a flag here. False start. Offense. Number 55. Five yard penalty. First down. It's the center, Kyle Fuller. Just kind of jerked that ball that time, Brendan. And really, that, what it does sometimes to the offense when you back up five yards, it gives you a little bit more room to work if you're trying to go into the end zone. It's already the fourth penalty against Baylor here this afternoon, which has been a problem. Offense has not been a problem. Corey Cole. Corey Coleman just got inside of VJ Banks, the defender on that play. It was just no leverage on that one, Ben. It was right, right into your lap as they're coming into the end zone. Well, again, it's a quick little play fake. That play fake has got all these guys turned around, and VJ Banks did literally turn around in his in his shoes, lost track. Of the receiver, like you said, got inside of him. That was too easy. The, the look on Corey Coleman's face as he walked by me was like, hey, man, this is just too easy. Extra point is good, and Baylor has put up 21 points, and we still have three minutes and 41 seconds to go in our first quarter. Let's take another look. Boy, up at the top, you're going to see V.J. Banks just going to let Corey Coleman get inside him. It's one-on-one. -on -one. There's nobody else inside. And he get, Like Ben said, he got completely turned around, and you can't get turned around at the goal line. You're going to get beat there. You might be able to get away with that in the open field, but not when you're trying to defend the goal line strike. Sixth touchdown catch already for Corey Cole. They're legends, icons, and warriors. Two of the biggest names in the UFC face off as coaches as interim featherweight champion Connor McGregor and Uriah Faber join an all new season of The Ultimate Fighter. The mayhem continues Wednesday only on FS1. Seth Russell maybe didn't have his best game against Lamar in his last outing through three interceptions, but here in the first quarter, he has thrown three touchdowns. One to Coleman, one to Lee, one to Cannon. Everybody involved so far. Not to mention the fact that Shock Linwood has already rushed for 54 yards. And Seth Russell's got 27 on the ground and a couple of carries as well. All right, so we get the football back here. That's it. Decent returns, but they won't get the opportunity here. And was that out of bounds is close, but they'll say it skipped through the end zone, and it is a touchback. Right over near that pylon. And so Dreyfus Jackson will go back to work. And they have announced the ball did. 
touchdown in the end zone, so it is a touchback. We'll take another look at how close this one was. Oh, boy. But if you try to do that the next 100 times in a row, <laughs> you would, never, you do would never be able to do that. Just inside the pylon, which is a touchdown. And quite different field position based on that inch. So it is at the 25-yard line for Dreyfus Jackson and Sam Stewart. Stewart has himself nine yards on the carry. That's what Rice wants to do, run a, a bunch of different backs, be able to pick up big yards on first downs, kind of stay on schedule here. See the fiery Phil Bennett. Obviously a lot of pressure on this defense for Baylor. The offense is a well-oiled machine, has been for years. The defense has been what everybody views as the problem. The tackle made after just a two-yard carry on Sam Stewart. By Trayvon Blanchard. Look at the Rice rushing yards and the leader each game. Three different guys Austin Walter, Sam Stewart, Juwan Davis. They've also got Derek Dillard, who's in the mix and has rushed for 167 yards this year. You'll see Luke Turner out of the Wildcat a little bit. You'll see Dreyfus Jackson run the ball as well. As Rice has been very good rushing the football. 272 yards per game. That's 11th in FBS. They tried to rush it here, and Sean Oakman says no. Maybe a yard or two on the play. They're basically running the same play, but in three plays in a row. Just an inside zone. So you're just kind of really scooping the inside, and Sean Oakman that time just collapsed from his end position. He was able to get his hands on Stewart. The offensive line is beat up for Rice. They have shuffled guys around. They've got a guy, John Pelman, making his first career start at right tackle. They're missing Spencer Stanley, who plays either center or guard, depending on their need. Looks like you're going to get Godber here, left guard. Ball shots, offense, number 51, five-yard penalty, second down. That's exactly who it is. Well, they have been juggling offensive linemen, like you've mentioned, due to injuries, but... The way that they train their linemen, they train them to play every single different position. In fact, Rua in there has played all five different positions at one time or another. So the penalty backs him up second and 14 from their own 32-yard line. And Dreyfus Jackson had nowhere to throw, but he's got plenty of room to run. The flag comes in as he slides close to the first down, but he will be short. going to bring it back that time during the run holy offense number 51 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul replay second down not a good series for the guard peter gardber well that's not good for him like you're saying but it's a really good job by baylor's grant campbell number five didn't get deep enough earlier on the touchdown pass but that time covered up the running back didn't allow sam stewart to get open and that's why drives had to pull it down and run now backed all the way up to second and 23. And on the option, Derek Diller stepped out of bounds. Knocked out by Orion Stewart. He got six on the play. Third down coming up. You know, I don't have my I don't have a second and 23 call in the Rolodex, but you know, I think a speed option to the boundary, the short side of the field, is not where you need to go, especially with the fast, speedy Baylor defense. One thing I've noticed here, Ben, is how tight the safeties are playing. I mean, if you can just get some protection, you can get deep behind the secondary right now. And that shows a lot of trust this defensive line that they can actually get up there and be disruptive and make the quarterback make bad decisions. Best third down team in the country, 0 for so far. This is a long one. Jackson looking for it all as he goes downfield and can't connect. Zach Wright trying to track it down. Rice will have to punt it away. Well, I thought they were going to have something there as they motioned out of the backfield. Well, Ryan Stewart 
had a big conversation with Xavier and Howard out there as who was going to take who. A lot of confusion on defense, and they just couldn't capitalize. James Fairmont, the senior, punts this one out of bounds. It'll depend on where they mark it. When you think of the Baylor offense, you think about Cannon, Coleman, all the high-flying receivers, but the run game, Brian, is a big part of it. Well, it is. I mean, they love to run, whether it's tackle uh, on their traps, whether it's power running with the fullback, whether it's LeBron McGowan on the lead block. They love to pound the middle, they keep you honest, keep those safeties kind of nosy at the line of scrimmage, and then they can really strike fear going deep off of that. They can the running game pay with the deep passing game. And, and not only that, you talked about the linebackers and the safeties, but we saw B.J. Banks on that last touchdown by Corey Coleman. His eyes were under when he's looking in the backfield as well. So everybody, all 11 guys having a hard time keeping their eyes disciplined between their guy and the running game. Well, it turned out to be not a good punt for James Faramond, and this is a nice little run for Corey Coleman. And that was in the backfield that time, moving Corey Coleman around. We see him returning punts. We see him catch touchdown passes that time, lining up in the backfield, trying to get their playmakers another way to get him the ball. And they got 19 yards. Rice wasn't in position defensively, and they throw a quick pass. And it is complete to the Owl 35 to Corey Coleman again. Man, you've, you're watching the pace right here. As a defensive linebacker, you know, in your career, how hard is it just to get lined up and get your eyes in the right place? Well, just on that particular play right there, Uretsky makes the play. They have to now get back to get lined up, and they're still kind of milling around as the ball's being snapped. So you can't get lined up, get your eyes on your key, and then go through your mental Rolodex and pre-snap what I have to do before the ball snap. That's three straight plays for Corey Coleman. Two in the backfield and one in the slot position. Different ways to get their star of the ball. And that'll be the last play of the first quarter as well. Corey Coleman has himself a decent first quarter. So does Seth Russell, who's thrown for 133 yards and three touchdowns. It is added up to a Baylor Bears 21-10 lead over Rice after just one quarter here in Waco. Christmas lights tangle. Five Baylor up 21-10 over the visiting Rice Owls. Final non-conference game for Baylor. We'll kick things off against Texas Tech in the Big 12 at AT&T Stadium next week. This is Shock Linwood on the first play of the second quarter. He gets close to the 20-yard line. Is Ben Lieber and Brian Baldinger calling the game from a different vantage point today, guys. How did you view the first quarter from down there on the field? I think we've enjoyed it. I mean, first yeah. of all, we're seeing a lot, but we, we're getting what we thought we were going to get. Just the speed of the game, how the tempo of it, and really how relaxed these players are playing right now. Yeah, I was able to sit into the end zone when Corey Coleman caught that touchdown. He walked right past me, and his face was just like, hey, this is just too easy. Didn't even give his guy a side five. Just like, just give me up. This is way too easy. So it was great to see that from his face. Jock Linwood. third down to get a first down. And Baylor is set up to strike again. And I'm just watching the Baylor players here, Brandon. I mean, they just turn to the sideline, look for the play. They've rehearsed. They practice like this all the time. They all have it down right now. They're in the right positions, lineups, as they bring the tight end on the field penny, probably for extra protection on this play of Seth Russell. You mentioned it earlier. Trayvon Armstead dismissed from the team earlier this week. So Gus Penning, Laquan McGowan, the tight ends be featured in today's game. Chuck Linwood dragging a defender behind him. He's able to get down near the five-yard line. Nick Uretsky along for the ride. And you said it, Baldy. Watching these guys operate on the sidelines is very impressive. It's a well-oiled machine. Every personnel group knows exactly where they're supposed to be, and that's the problems it gives this defense. Second and two from the Rice six. Seth Russell's already thrown three touchdown passes. Flags come in and the whistle sounds. False start. False start. Offense. Offense. Number one. Five-yard penalty. First down. First down. Corey Coleman's involved again. 
Well, Ben, you did it. I mean, as soon as you just said it's a well-oiled machine, they, uh, they beat themselves <laughs> with a three-snap penalty. You can't put that jinx on me. <laughs> Like I said, the last time they were penalized in this situation, they gave him more room to operate on the touchdown throw to Coleman. They were the worst team in the league when it comes to taking penalties, averaging almost 13 penalties per game. Shock Linwood right down Main Street. Touchdown, Baylor. yards out. Jacques Linwood finds the end zone for the fourth time this season. And what a fantastic job once again on position in the back of the end zone. And Gus Penning does a great job of leading up right on Lions. Great body position. There's no extra defender. You can't spill that ball to anybody. That's the, the scheme of this offense. Spread you out. Make it stressful on the safeties. Nobody can fill. And a great job by Penning. And this one is put through by Chris Callahan and Baylor now with the 28 to 10 lead. We got a chance this week to talk with longtime head coach of the Rice Owls, David Bailiff. And in preparing for Rice, we of course got to talking about somebody who knows quite well, and that's Art Bryles. And he paid him what might be the nicest compliment that we've seen one coach play another. And that is, he had to say that Art Bryles has caused more changes on defense than any other man in the history of the game. And guys, we were there, we, we bounced that off our prize himself. He had a great response. He said he, he's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Art has been doing this since his days at Stephenville High School. Legendary high school program, so many state championships. Obviously took it to the University of Houston, brought it here to Baylor, and really it's revolutionized the Big 12. I mean, every single team right now has been forced to sort of play at this high octane level here, Ben, to try to keep up with the Baylor Bears. And not only that, it's also changing the whole game. Tulsa right now, Bowling Green, their coaches all come from the, the Bryles tree. And they're doing a lot of the same things, stressing out defenses with tempo and a ton of athletes in space. This one is way deep into the back of the end zone and will leave the end zone around from Austin Walter. Ben, you mentioned it. The Art Bryles disciples are doing quite well. Coming into week three, these were the top three offenses in all of FBS. Baylor, Bowling Green, Tulsa, that is Bryles, Bryles, and Bryles, with Barbers and Montgomery being the coaches there in their second and first seasons, respectively. Well, even ba David Bailiff was saying, it's hard to go against this offense because what do you do? They spread you out so much that even if you call a zone on defense where you think you're going to keep the ball in front of you, but by design, you're allowing a lot of one-on-one -on -one tackling opportunities, and that's tough on these defensive players. Yeah, it's also had a nice showing last week at Oklahoma. Philip Montgomery in his first year with the Golden Hurricanes, bringing Art Brown's offense up into Tulsa, Oklahoma. They give it to Juwan Davis on first down. He gets out to the 32-yard line, a seven-yard pickup. You know, Rice came in today leading the nation in third down conversions, but they put themselves with some penalties in some third and really long situations. You get seven yards like Jawan Davis did on first down. They can stay on schedule and convert some of those third downs. So just second and three here for the Owls. Averaging 522 yards of offense per game. No chance for the option swallowed up by Andrew Billings. And there are the flags after the fact. Dreyfus Jackson spent a little extra time on the turf there, guys. He, he's a little shook up, too, from that hit by Billings. After the play, Short conduct, defense number 75, 15-yard penalty from the dead ball spot, automatic, first down. Well, we talk about Andrew Billings being one of the strongest guys in college football, but to see that cat-like quickness yeah, right there, he... Was impressive. You have to block it, that guy. I know some plays are designed to leave a free yeah. guy in the backside, but not with Andrew Billings. He's not just a strong guy. He is awfully quick. Yeah. You better not sucker punch your bite. Like not blocking him because that's what just happened. He took Dreyfus head right, Dreyfus Jackson's head right to the ground. 6-2-3-10 and about every watch list for every award alignment is eligible for. And you see why. Carry for Jawan Davis. Goes for five. Byron Bond 
Rice makes the tackle. You can see Rice kind of trying to slow it down just a little bit. They're lined up. They do want to play fast, but they don't want to keep giving Baylor so many opportunities with the football. They can tell it'll be hard to slow that team down. All three receivers at the bottom of the screen. For Dreyfus Jackson, who glances over the sideline for the play. Jackson finds Dennis Parks, and he is dragged down hard by Trevon Blanchard. Well, what was the other thing that we heard in the conference call? Billy Lynch, the co-offensive coordinator for Rice, was telling us, and this makes sense because it's Rice, right? They love analytics, they love numbers, but they said analytically they figured out if we can just get two, that's the model, get two first downs each drive, that's going to equal points. So that is their goal every series and every offensive series. Get two, guys, get two. And that's what you hear all the players saying. Get two, get two. It gets them into a rhythm. They just got their second first down. They only need one to get that. And it's going to be close. Billings, Billings. his nose in there again. Hey, you got it, Brandon. I mean, he's right there in the middle of the line. Nobody moves him. I mean, he's an immovable object in the middle. They're just going to set up a third short. I mean, they got two bodies on him, and he ate that double team like it was a snack. And right now, this is a bad sign for Rice as their center, Martin, just went down. Trey Martin, who started every game at center for him, mentioned the injuries they've had up front. Indispensable player for him. They are tending to him on the field. They are also calling for the measurement for this first down. The problem being that Trey Martin is in between the measuring sticks and the football. <laughs> They might just drape it right over him to try and measure this ball. Yeah, they'll move it around. Him. But it'll be close on whether or not this is a first down or a fourth down. Yeah. And it is a first down. The nose of the football got him there. And so Rice converts, gets that second first down on the drive. And they've got a fresh set now in Baylor territory at the 47. Well, they got two like we talked about, but on the bad end, it looks like Trey Martin, at least for one play, is going to go out. And you mentioned it, Baldy. They cannot do with another injury on this offensive line. Trey Martin, one of their stalwarts, one of the best experienced guys in that line. Everybody's been shuffling around because of injuries and guys getting dinged up. And now they bring in another new player yeah, no, to Andrew an already Ruhl. depleted offensive line. Andrew Ruhl goes from right guard to center. He played center in uh, Aloha Bowl a year ago. But a new player snapping the ball to Dreyfus Jackson. You always worry about the snap to the quarterback with the new center. Dreyfus Jackson all the way over towards the sideline, but there is absolutely nowhere to go for Temi Alaka. Brendan Burke up here in the booth. Ben Lieber. Brian Baldinger, getting a new, unique perspective analyzing for field level. Christian Steckel is along as well. We're here at McLean Stadium in Waco, Texas, where the Baylor Bears put up 21 in the first quarter and now have a 28-10 lead over the Rice Owls. Trey Martin still out, so Andrew Roya continues to snap the football for Rice. They've had to shuffle their entire offensive line over the first few weeks. Allowed four sacks last week. David Bailiff says, though, they learn they have some depth there, and that should pay off in the long run. Flags again. Taylor Young came up in the eight gap and just threatened the blitz. Offense, number three, five-yard penalty, second down. It's the running back, Juwan Davis. Yeah, you're exactly right. They threaten blitz. They bring a guy in the A gap, they bring a guy on the outside, and then Joan Davis, because he realizes, all right, now I've got to protect. I've got to go get that guy. Got a little antsy before the snap and just moved just a yep. little bit. He wanted to get out because he was probably going to be hot on that route if they picked up those two potential blitzers inside. He was a little, a little too antsy. Second and 16. Jamal Palmer, second sack of the season, got a five-yard loss on the play. Well, Palmer 
just comes right around the corner this time. And Dreyfus Jackson, he tries to step up to the pocket, but there's no place to step up. Palmer just beat him quickly, went right for the ball. It's a good thing that Dreyfus Jackson had good ball security on him. Well, and again, we, we talk about Sean Oakman all the time and some of the guys in the interior, and forgotten is Palmer on the other side. Just that time with that sack, again, he shows those violent hands. He has such quick, violent hands, was able to get around the right tackle and get the sack. And he unbuckled Dreyfus Jackson's helmet on that play. Jackson trying to make something happen. The pursuit of the football, Bo Blackshear finally brings him down. And fourth down and a mile coming up. Well, you can begin to see and feel the pressure that Baylor puts on you with their offense and what it does to their defense where you get in a situation where you've got to throw the ball more than you want and all of a sudden it's just collapsing right now for Rice. They can't play the game they wanted running the ball, ball possession, time of possession. Well, the thing I like too about Baylor's defense right now, there was a throw out to the outside to Parks and what happens? Good team defense. They corralled him. Guy on the outside, guy on the inside. They pursued, got the tackle. That particular time, Dreyfus Jackson is a quick athlete. He has great feet. And those guys bottle him up, bought time for the rest of the team to make the play. Air catch made by Lynx Hawthorne at the Baylor 15-yard line. That's where Seth Russell will have the football as the Baylor offense coming back to work. They've already got 28 points, and they're looking for more. Waco, Texas. No one knows it better than the two guys on the field, Brian Baldinger and Ben Lieber. Ben, I think I can see the sweat on the top of your head from up here. <laughs> I, I'm going to towel. I'm, I'm telling myself off quite a bit. This one is to Johnny Jefferson, who gets to the 21-yard line, a seven-yard pickup. You know, Brandon, one of the things, you know, we mentioned David, David Bayless' uh, quote about Art Riles, but in this spread offense, the receivers, it's an advantage, never huddling and just lining up. They, they save themselves a lot of uh, exertion by just lining up in that position out wide. Johnny Jefferson nearly got away. He gets the first down into the 30-yard line, but he nearly broke a long run. Well, again, we talk about the athletes that Baylor has between Coleman and Jay Lee and Kaylee, Katie Cannon. We haven't talked about some of the other guys, but running backs as well. You look at Johnny Jefferson. That's a 4-4-1 type of guy, and they're super excited about this young sophomore. On play action, out of the backfield was the tight end, Gus Penning. And he's refusing to go down. Finally dropped at the 35-yard line. Don't go to sleep on the tight ends now. Gus Penning, he just lost his shoe. He needs to be replaced right now, but they have, they have plenty of guys that could go in. As Laquan McGowan comes in at 403 pounds with a little bit of swiftness to him. Lining up at a true tight end next to Spencer Drongo, the left tackle. Well, you mentioned that's the first catch by a tight end this season for Bailey. Russell to Coleman. Harrison, and this is my pawn shop. And after 25 years in business, there's... I don't know how long his dad could keep him. 
You know, if they keep putting up prolific offenses and scoring at this kind of rate, this is what everybody in the country wants to be able to score as quickly as they do. It puts so much pressure on the other team's offense, allows the defense, man, just to go out and really, you know, right now with the 35-10 lead, I mean, you could really go out and really pin your ears back at the quarterback. Right, but it's also going to be hard to go to another program where we're not going to have the Corey Coleman's and the Katie Ken's. Well, you got to recruit like his dad then. Trey Martin is back in at center. Sam Stewart takes the ball out to the 35-yard line. And, and, guys, to your point, if you want a guy that knows Art Ryle's system, Art says Kendall has known his system and has been around it since he could say mama. So who knows it better than Kendall? Well, he's coached the inside receivers, the outside receivers here before he got a chance to call the plays when Phil Montgomery left to go to Tulsa. So already in two and a half quarter or two and a half games, it's been electrifying. And he has that Bryles bravado that his dad has as well. So that he's, he's going to follow his dad in his footsteps as well. Travis Jackson. There's just nowhere to throw to. Looking for somebody to open up, and he will throw it towards the stands. Andrew Billings and Jamal Palmer were coming after him. Well, and you said it, Brendan. I mean, these last three or four series, the back seven for Baylor has shut down the receivers for Rice. Too often, every time Dreyfus drops back, he's getting pressure. There's coverage sacks. Everybody, good team defense like I talked about in the last drive. This Baylor defense has stepped up, looked a little shaky the first couple games, but they've really settled down, playing really fast, and good team defense. Showing blitz and Rice will look to change the play. And Campbell, everybody coming to the line. And here they come. And down he goes. Taylor Young with the sack. And a big loss on the play. Well, they had seven up there that time. And really, Dreyfus Jackson, he, he reset the protection. But they had one more blitzer than they had protector in the play. Dreyfus Jackson never really got a chance to set his feet. Well, Stewart did a great job of stepping up and getting the inside block, but when you bring one more guy than you can block, it's always a free guy. Don't miss the layup is what they say. And what a game back for Taylor. Coming back from that shoulder injury, now gets a sack. Three sacks by three different players this afternoon for Baylor, Oakman, Palmer, and now Young. Rice is just one for five on third down. And Jackson has to tuck it and run, and he had a long way to go. And Gets back to the original line of scrimmage, and Rice will have to punt. Well, that's the first time, I think, all season long that Phil Bennett just brought three. He said, we haven't shown our defensive Rolodex yet. We want to play simple. We want to see our guys play fast, but you're going to see a lot more stuff out of us today in that three-man front. It was exactly what he was talking about. You know, I think the month of September for college football is a lot like preseason in the NFL. You know, as you get ready for conference play, you don't want to show too much too early and give a lot of these teams that they're going to see, starting with Texas Tech, a lot of opportunities to study their tendencies. Corey Coleman, always fun to watch. He's back there for the punt, but he will defer on this one instead. And Patrick Levels gets just a few yards before he's taken down. Baylor flexing its muscles. He'll be back at it when we come back. October 8th on FS1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Baylor's offense has made it look relatively easy here this afternoon. They go back to work with the ball on their own 23-yard line. And tripped up with Shock Linwood by Alex Lyons for no game. Well, you notice it looks like Baylor's number one receivers are going to get a little bit of a break as we're seeing Lynx Hawthorne out there. Ishmael Zamora, who we may be hearing a lot about, huge target at 6'4". Now he's 231 pounds, but those guys are getting some late reps here at the end of the first half. And the parade of freakish athletes continues for our Bryles offense. Seth Russell's got all sorts of time. And he's got Lynx Hawthorne. Couldn't get it. Tried to come back to it. Crowd wants a flat that they won't get. Well, I think they had a pretty good call because really on the play, when you look at J.P. Thompson, the safety, he might have grabbed uh, Link's, uh, Hawthorne's jersey just a little bit to slow him down, but that's the aggressive attacking style right there. doesn't matter if you're the backup, whatever. The style does for changes. Come on, offensive guy. Let that go. You got to let that <laughs> That's a good You got to slow him down play. somehow, right? <laughs> Or might be the only guy in their roster that doesn't have any track accolades in his past, but he can run as 
well. And Russell will turn and hand it off to Linwood on the delay. And shock Linwood can run before he is tackled. He picks up the first down. Preston Gordon makes the stop. That's that tackle pull, that tackle uh, fold that they run. Spencer Drongo, there he is, number 58, leading uh, Shock Linwood right through that hole. That's a play that you don't see in college football anymore, but they'll pull both their tackles and fold them up on the linebacker. Eight guys are back on the field, and Russell has one in his range. Pass is complete. It's time to Chris Johnson reserve. And the hard thing about that, what you're talking about, Baldy, is that as a linebacker, you're reading the triangle. And the triangle is the center the, and the two guards and the running back, usually, that, that's in the dot. Outside of your peripheral is the tackles, and you don't often see them until they're right in your face and blocking you. So that's why it's so effective, because it's it's just out of your vision. He comes out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Shock Linwood with another first down, and as they move the chains, Baylor moves back to the line. Russell with a bullet to Coleman, has a step on the outside. Corey Coleman, his third touchdown today. He got a step on VJ Banks again, and boy, did he turn the corner like a fine European sports car. And Spencer Drango just gives him a lift. Yo, Short pass, run after the catch. Big part of how this, this, this offense is predicated. They're going to make you tackle, Ben, on the perimeter. And if you can't get you to the sideline and get them out of bounds, they all can turn a corner. You know, I can't tell you how quick he got up and went. His first few steps, he was at top speed within about four or five steps. And Banks is one of the fastest guys in the team. In Texas, they call it the giddy up. He's got a big giddy up. Some giddy up for sure. Chris Callahan adds the extra point. It is a 42 10 lead for Corey Coleman. Seven touchdowns in the last game and a half for that guy. First rival, Corey Coleman. Have a day. 32-yard catch. Most of that was running. His third receiving touchdown today. He's now over 100 yards. He's actually right at 100 yards. His seventh career 100-yard game. He's got six catches of the 11th thrown. And completed by Seth Russell. He's 11 of 14. This one into the end zone. Austin Walter won't take it out. Well, how did we get here? We've seen a lot of points. We see a lot of yards. Relatively split for Baylor. But look at the time of possession. Rice trying to slow it down. Baylor not taking very much time at all, guys. Yeah, you know, Brendan, just down here in the just down here in the field, we see the elite athletes. The Corey Coleman's, the, the JD Cannon, Jay Lee. We see the elite athletes. And then a great scheme. And then if you add the tempo that they play at, it really stresses individual players on any defense to try to match the athleticism of their players. And defensively, my goodness. I mean, watching the guys up front, you get the, the chance to see not only the power, but the speed. I mean, Billings is firing off the football. Jamal Palmer looking violent as always. We're seeing it firsthand. It's quite a treat. You know, you mentioned Jamal Palmer. We've called, we talked about him a lot here, Ben. You know, he, he just strung that play out all the way to the sidelines. And I, he doesn't get the attention because of some of the great athletes and the attention that Oakman's gotten on the other side. But he is a solid and sound player. Well, and he's coming back from the ACL injury from last year as well. You can see the brace on his left knee from here. And, uh, you know, that's always something mentally you got to get over. But he's over that right now. Closing in on the final minutes of the first half. Travis Jackson trying to get something going for the Rice offense. The only touchdown they have today was because of a long punt return. And the field was shrunk down to 24 yards. And flags here. They never got the playoff. Back him up. Delay of game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Well, again, Phil Bennett, the defensive coordinator for Baylor, is doing things that he hasn't done before. Last series, we saw a three-man front. This time, he's shifting the defensive front and moving the linebackers around, which is given, again, this offensive line that had a lot of guys move around, a lot of new bodies, having a hard time to communicate these new guys shifting around and trying to get their responsibilities. And right now, they haven't gotten the ball to their star receiver since his touchdown, Dennis Parks, in press coverage right now. Looking for Parks. And the flags come. 
Ian Xavier and Howard were all tangled up going after that pass. Ben, how do you see that? Do you see that as the defender had position and the receiver just couldn't get through it? I mean, how do you look at that from a defensive standpoint? You know, I, I think he was doing what he was he was coached to do. Pass interference. Defense number 28. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic. Uh, First down. I think they got the number wrong there. I think they're going to get on Howard. And again, when you're in that situation, he can't see the ball. But So what's Number he trying to do? Correction. Trying to press his body up against the receiver. He did that, trying to look for the ball as well, trying to turn around. I think it's incidental. The ball's a little bit under, underthrown. I don't like that call. But I think they have to go back to Parks. So he's the one guy that can get behind this defense. He's the only Rice receiver that has a catch for positive yardage today. He's got three catches for 63. Temi Alaka with a negative one-yard completion. Another flag. And look at the window. And that pass was put in to Alaka from Dreyfus Jackson. I don't know how he got the ball through all those bodies, man. I don't it either. was crowded in the middle of the field. We saw Seth Russell thread the needle, and now we saw Dreyfus Jackson do the same thing. Trevon Blanchard was right there, number 48. I thought he was going to make a play on the ball, but the ball went just past him. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Defense, number 95. That 15-yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. Automatic. First down. Turns into a pretty big play. 19 yards on the catch, 15 more for the penalty. Well, again, you can see Blanchard as the outside linebacker. He does a good job of staying square and going right back inside. He read the quarterback's <laughs> eyes. Boy, I thought he was going to make a play on the football bodies. and just went right past him. Best field position Rice had in a long time. they got to take advantage of it. Nothing like going into halftime, regardless of the score, putting up some points. It was all the way to the Baylor 30. Juwan Davis can't navigate much farther than that. Just a couple of yards. Now eight penalties, guys, for 79 yards for Baylor, so that theme continues. Well, you talked about Baldy. They have to stay clean as they get into conference play. You kind of expect some sloppiness and penalties early on, but they have to clean that, especially coming off a of bye week. They've done a good job with no turnovers. they got to clean up the penalties, though. Jackson steps up. Is able to put it in the chest of Maiden, but he can't haul it in, and there are flags on the play. It's Xavier Howard in coverage again. That's going to be another penalty on, on Howard, two against Parks on this drive. Try to go through Parks to get to the ball. I think it's a good call. I'll concede. I think that's a good call, too. <laughs> Before the flag was even thrown, it looked like a PI. Defense, number four. Spot foul, automatic. First down. The third Baylor penalty this drive. It's the same position right here at the bottom of the screen on Parks against Howard. You see him in a press position right now. Really, I mean, Parks did a good job of positioning himself, much like low post basketball, keeping Howard off. So now inside of a minute and inside of the 20. He's able to get that one out of his hands, and he can't get it into the hands of Zach Wright. He had to release that one in a hurry, though. And what a nice job by Blanchard that time. Baylor once again dials up a blitz, single everybody up on the outside, and Blanchard does a good job of, he doesn't know where the football's at, but he read the receiver's eyes, saw his hands go up, so you put your hands up, and he got lucky that the ball hit it. Sometimes you got to play blind like that, don't you, Ben? I mean, you can't always find the ball. No, absolutely. That's why we're told to read the, the receiver's eyes, and especially their hands. Oh, Baylor wrapped that play. And Dreyfus Jackson is still collecting himself on the turf. Brendan, that time, Dreyfus Jackson spun, and he spun right into a speeding Taylor Young, who is really, clearly, a great playmaker for this defense. Put a shot right on his ribs. That one hurt Dreyfus. Well, and again, it's this defensive line. That time we've talked about, we talked about Andrew Billings and Blackshear, but Byron Bonds comes in, makes Dreyfus stop his feet, turn back around, and that's where the speedy Taylor Young comes in and gets a TFL. So we talked about how, how Taylor Young can bring so much energy to this defense. We've already seen two big plays here in the first half. You know, the thing about Taylor Young, I mean, sometimes people just, they recruit size. He's 5'10", but it doesn't matter. He can play the game regardless. And uh, sometimes it's, it's an overlooked thing. He just doesn't have the measurables. But he can flat out run and hit and cover. 
And you mentioned he's such a compact body. You know, probably not ideal for an outside linebacker the height-wise, but he plays with such explosion, and his, his motor's always running hot. And, and I think Phil does a good job of moving him around and creating positions for him. We saw him in the A-gap today. We saw him blitzing off the edge. And then I think he's got the green light just to go sometimes like in the last play. But he has great instincts. I mean, we saw early in the football game, got a little antsy, one to blitz off the edge. Got a, got a foul by going over across the neutral zone, but outside of that, played a clean game, playing fast, playing strong. Xavier Howard is matched up on Dennis Parks all over the field. See if they go to him here on this third and 14 at the top of your screen. Dreyfus Jackson does stay in the game after that big hit. And he may have got Baylor to jump. The flags didn't go, though. And here they come after him again. He gets away from Oakman, but he can't get away altogether. Orion Stewart brings him down well behind the line of scrimmage, and that'll make it a tough field goal try. That time on that pressure, they brought Sean Oakman inside, into the hit. You see him right there, right in the face of Dreyfus Jackson. And why wouldn't you take a guy six foot nine with the wingspan of a condor and put him in the face of the quarterback obstructing his view? Well, again, I think this is bad news for the rest of the Big 12 if they're watching this football game. We know that Baylor can score some points, but they've had just to outscore people because Baylor's defense can sometimes be undisciplined. They give up some big plays, but today, great team defense, guys playing the responsibilities. Do your job is all Phil Bennett was trying to do. The clock was running. By rule, there's a 10-second runoff. Rice is out of timeouts. Please set the game clock to six seconds, and the clock will start on my signal. So it's the, re the gap responsibilities, playing good team defense. You saw it right there. Open goes to the inside, and, and on the outside, they get a blitzer. He remains maintains his leverage and gets the sack. Hayden Tabola is out for a 51-yard try. He's one for one in his career, hit a 37-yarder on Rice's opening drive today. This one is much farther away, and they won't get close to it. Blocked by... point on a great first half of football for the Baylor Bears. Ryan, Ryan Reed came free Reed. right off the edge. You're going to see Ryan Reed coming off the edge unblocked right there. And he's got a, he's got a good shot reaching out and stretching for that ball. And as, you, as the Baylor goes by us coming off the field, that block at the end gave him even a bigger lift than what they did in the first half. Let's go down to the field. Christian Steckel has our prize. Christian? Brendan, thanks. Coach, your defense was scrutinized heavily through the first two games. What statement are they sending today? Well, you know, we didn't start out very fast. You know, I mean, they put 10 points on us in a hurry. One of them due to a kickoff return and uh, had some penalties on some others. we got to clean up the penalty deal, but we're playing with a lot of effort and enthusiasm and energy, and that's what we want to do today. We didn't have any energy the first two games. we got some energy today. Our crowd's doing a great job. And, we got to finish it. You know, we feel like right now it's zero zero ball game. We got to come out and score. Almost 10 yards of carry, three touchdowns through the air. We know he's fast, but what makes Corey Coleman so dynamic? He's mean. That's what changes it. He's mean. So it's good luck in the second half, Brendan. Thank you, Christian. Our Bryles has to be pleased with that first half of play. Our score here at halftime: Baylor 42, Rice 10. Coming up, they will have a tough test next week in Western Kentucky. Coming to town. And maybe this is a great warm-up for them with the offense that Western Kentucky brings to face this Baylor team. Well, you're exactly right, Brennan. I mean, it's going to be a huge challenge for them next week. But this is a great precursor to that tempo, that spread offense, how you have to get guys aligned on defense. So you're right. This is a good test for them this week as they face a high-powered offense next week in Western Kentucky. Chris Platt won't have an opportunity to take it out of the end zone. And so Seth Russell, who had an outstanding first half, is back on the field. You know, we're, we've got a great vantage point right in front of Kendall Bryles as the whole offense huddles up. Seth Russell right next to Kendall Bryles right here. They'll come out with the first play as they take the field. They'll line right up and snap the ball. There was a flag on the play. The referee didn't have his microphone on. They come out with two. their two. Fleet-footed wide receivers, Katie Cannon and Corey Coleman standing right next to each other in a twin set to the left. It does give Baylor an extra five yards on the penalty. And so from the 30-yard line, the flag comes in as Shock Linwood got tripped up there. Espinosa with a great shoestring tackle bringing Linwood down.
for 80. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. They got that was holding down. number 80. On the hole. Yeah, they got the big guy. The foul. He was lined up in the standard D position as a normal tight end that time. But a nice job by Rice's defense. They clogged everything up in the middle. They strung the play outside like you're supposed to. And Zach Espinosa comes up and makes a nice play. I don't know how you can hold call holding on Laquan. I don't know how you can find <laughs> out where those massive mitts are. A little trickery here as they get the ball to KD Cannon out of the backfield. Makes a man miss, but can't do much with it afterwards. The ball came out at the end of the play, and Rice says they have it. And they do. J.P. Thompson knocked it free. Boy, and I tell you, right there, Brandon, the, the entire field. sideline of Rice problem. just abrupted as soon as that ball got out. First down, Rice. That's exactly what they wanted to do, try to get a stop, and that time a turnover. Uh, and that was all created by Rice. Look how loose he's carrying that football. Not great ball security. Cannon trying to do what he can to get some extra yardage. And you can see absolutely right there. J.P. Thompson just knocks the ball out, strips it out. And to me, that looks like a Rice recovery. Yeah, oh yeah, that's clear. Clear, Ben, in the field of play. Boy, exactly what they needed. Just a jolt of energy and a big play uh, as they stripped the ball out of Cannon's hands. Alex Lyons got on it, but replay is going to take a look and see if anybody that was out of bounds made contact with that football. Well, me and Ben are looking right at the big McLean Stadium screen. It's huge, and we've got a, we had a great vantage point, and you can see that ball is in bounds. A great shot. I think that's pretty clear. Great shot. That, that should be a declarative view for anybody upstairs to see. Yeah, there was nobody that actually touched the ball when they're out of bounds. Cannon tried to recover it. Ball comes back in the field of play, and Alex Lyons recovers it for Rice. So that's going to be a takeaway for this Rice defense that's really come out in this second half and has played fast. They played quick. Played spirited, Ben. I mean, really did. Clocked everything up on the inside. Espinosa with the big play. Then, then Baylor comes back with a misdirection play, trying to get everybody fast flown over the top. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. First down. First down. So Rice gets the ball on the Baylor 24-yard line. Second time today, they will start a drive on the Baylor 24. The first time, their only touchdown. Reif is Jackson who took some hits at the end of that first half, including one that stunned him. And Rice used their final timeout to get him a little breathing room. He's in the game here at the start of the second half. And he hands it off to Jawan Davis, who's barreled backwards by Jamal Palmer after a yard. Jawan Davis, the ball here. Run down by Jamal Palmer. Remember, Rice came in today in their first couple of games, averaging 272 yards rushing. Baylor's completely shut them down and forced them to throw it a lot more than they wanted here uh, in that first half. They've improved their rushing yardage 105 yards per game since last season. That's the ninth largest increase in all of FBS. They're rushing for about 168 yards per game last year. As you mentioned, only 272.7 this year. Jackson pitches. Davis cuts back at the 20. He's got the first down as he's inside the 15. Ron Blanchard on the tackle. Well, once again, Baylor comes with the blitz. They've got Grant Campbell and Taylor Young blitzing up in the inside gaps, and it was actually Taylor who came out of it trying to make the tackle. The missed tackle is what led to the first down. After the nine-yard pickup, they go back to Davis, and he goes nowhere because Sean Oakman's all over him again. And then we bring in Christian Steckel once again. Christian? Well, guys, David Bailiff told me coming out of the locker room that they've got to figure out a way to neutralize this Baylor front. He said, we were flat. We weren't ourselves, and we've got to find an edge. He said, Dreyfus Jackson's ankle's banged up, but he's going to go in the second half. And he said, we got to force turnovers, score some points, and play with pride. turnover right off the bat here and Dreyfus Jackson's going to the air. Now he's not. He's going to tuck it and run. And he's able to get to the five-yard line, but Christian, you just mentioned that ankle, and that ankle just took a shot. Yeah, and I tell you, Dreyfus Jackson gets up and he's, he's kind of shaking off that right shoulder. I'm right in front of him as he goes back. Tough kid, played last year with a dislocated left shoulder, just tied it down and played a large part of that season. 
Texas. They haven't been happy with the amount of hits he's been taking. They said he did a much better job last week against North Texas to limit the contact, but still, they don't want him taking as many hits as he has. They never got that message through to Taylor McCart, his predecessor, and that's one of the reasons why Dreyfus Jackson got so much time playing as an underclassman. Play clock running way down. They just get it off. Touchdown! Derek Dillard takes it the rest of the way from five yards out, and Rice gets the turnover and converts it to points. You know, that's what you need to do when you get sudden change of takeaway on defense. You need to come down, not just put three points on the board, but put the ball in the end zone. Nice job of Dillard hitting that hole quick. Taylor Young recognized it, saw it, but just couldn't make the play. It's the 19th career touchdown for Derek Dillard, who's climbing up the all-time list at Rice University. Well, Derek Dillard capped it off, but it was set up by some careless ball control from KD Cannon and a nice play from the safety J.P. Thompson. He knocked it. were measured at 122 degrees on the field just before kickoff. It is not that hot up here in the booth, guys. Hey, we're staying in the shade now. All is, all is good. Chris Platt, way out the back of the end zone. And that'll bring it out to the 25. Time now for our TXU Energy High Energy Play of the Game. And, well, you can take your pick of Corey Coleman touchdowns, but how about the one where he just went up and got it? Well, it was a ball that had a lot of air on it. And really, the defense guys were there to make the play. They bracketed him perfectly. But it's just Coleman's athleticism that cuts inside and leaps over the top. And at the very end, he's, he tells us right to our faces, I'm the best receiver. Well, and he, on that play, he looked like, because he jumped first. Like, he was the aggressor, and he timed it over V.J. Banks, and that's why he came down with the ball. Gowan in as a blocker, and he opened up a big hole for Shock Linwood. He's at the 40, tracked down at the Rice 30. And Laquan McGowan, that's why he's in there. That's why he's in that H-back, fullback position going straight up on the middle linebacker and just obliterating everything in front of him. And really, that's all you got to do sometimes is just take up space. Well, Coach Bryles was talking about yesterday, we got to get this guy moving some people out of the way. And I think that particular play right there on Lions shows what he can do at 410 pounds. A little bit of the lightning from Johnny Jefferson gets him a first and goal situation on a 19-yard run. Some teams throw it to explode down the field. Baylor has that ability with three or four different backs behind a really senior dominant offensive line to do the same thing in the run game. Jefferson again. Trying to get there. He will. Touchdown, Johnny Jefferson. Well, that's why it's so hard to play this Baylor team because once you see a small weakness on defense, they get exploited a little bit, give up a big play. The offense can come right back with all that firepower. Big time receivers on the outside, and we've talked about how well they run the football, and they can come back right back in just a few plays and put seven back on the board. You know, sometimes they just make a statement. Kendall Pryor said, you know, this drive, we're going to run the football. We're not going to play it on the ground. We're going to go right at them, and that's what they did. Point makes it 49 17 for Baylor. Let's go to Jenny Taft in Los Angeles for a game break. Jenny? Brendan, thanks. Number 24, Oklahoma State visiting Texas. The Longhorns going for it on fourth and two. Tyrone swoops, takes it in seven yards for the touchdown. Charlie Strong and the Longhorns trying to avoid their first one and three start since 1956. Texas up 20 to 17 at half. Brendan, back to you and the guys. Well, thanks, Jenny. Texas has uh, certainly made some strides a couple of weeks ago. These Rice Owls gave them a pretty good test. They seem to be getting better every week. Oh, yeah, you look at that Texas game with Rice, and Rice really outplayed them. Just a bunch of huge turnovers, some of them costly close to the red zone. That's the reason why Texas won that game, and that kind of got out of hand. But you look at the stats and watch the game. Rice played one heck of a game against a good team in Texas. Remember, they had 96 offensive plays that day. They were down 21 nothing and scored 14 straight points on Texas and had a chance to really get right back in that game and had a turnover before the halftime. All of the Baylor drives have lasted two minutes, 32 seconds or less. 2.32, their longest scoring drive. They have punted once. 
They have scored seven touchdowns. They lead 49 to 17 over Rice. This one ease to Austin Walter, who will take a knee. Well, Rice got that big stop and the big turnover that got them some points, but guys, it seems like Baylor has made that a distant memory by just marching right down the field and putting up their seventh touchdown. Well, and again, that's what makes this team so, so dangerous is, yeah, their defense will give up some plays. This particular game has been pretty sound, but the offense can come right back, and they don't just have to throw the football. Again, we saw Big McGowan get in there and move some people around. This running game is awfully dangerous, too. Dreyfus Jackson, 5 of 11 through the air for 82 yards today. Juwan Davis gets the carry and able to slip through for four yards. His 11th carry now 31 yards. You know, and Brennan, we talked with uh, Phil Bennett. You know, they had the bye week last week. And this past week, they went and put the pads on like it was two-a-days. You know, three straight days of hitting and tackling and, you know, really getting back to the basics. And, you know, that's what he's looking for on this drive here. The basics defensively shutting down the run, getting off blocks. Quick throw, and it's complete to Timmy Alonka. And he'll be stopped just shy of the first down. And Ben, we talked to the coaching staff for Baylor, and they mentioned that during training camp, during fall camp, I mean, they had 20 full-speed snaps with the pads on. That's it, 20 snaps? Yeah, I couldn't believe that. When he said 20 snaps of full-speed contact, I said, that's just not enough. I know that college football is changing a little bit, and you got to take care of players, and there's a lot more compliance issues, but 20 snaps just does not get a defense ready to go. Part of hitting is, is conditioning, get your body ready for those impacts. I just don't think you can get it done in 20, 20 snaps. And you watched the first couple games of Baylor, and that was pretty evident. Offense, number 51, five-yard penalty, third down. That's a bad penalty for Peter Gopper. Jumped on third and one, and it'll make it third and six. Really changes the play call, too, Brendan. Third and one, you, you really lean on your running game. Uh, inside power, but third and six is very difficult to think that you can go back the inside run game on this. I mean, Dreyf is going to have to find an open receiver here on this play. All his receivers at the top of the screen. And he's able to hit his man near the sticks. Alaka gets the first down. He took a hit there right on the sideline. Ron Blanchard, Ryan Reed, both in there, a nine-yard pickup, and they move the chains. Well, Rice offensively is in a little bit of a predicament because Dennis Parks, their number one receiver, has not been on the field. So you get in these third down situations as a little bit of curiosity of who's going to make the play? Who's going to step up and lead this offense with Parks out? Coming into the game, Dreyfus Jackson completing 73% of his throws on third down. 19 completions, 18 of them were for first downs. That's how you lead the nation in third down percentage. Nice catch in the hands by James Maiden, but he just got bulldozed. Blanchard and Wads both got to him. No game. Well, what a, what a great play by Blanchard, playing off the block of Zach Wright, staying on his feet. A lot of times on paper, those are one-for-one one blocks, and if a defensive guy can play off that block and you gain an extra defender, that's typically what happens. That's up second and 10 from the Rice 38. Rice has no problem running the play clock down. Trying to hold on to the football as long as they can. Juwan Davis put the ball on the ground. The pile up, and they'll start digging. Baylor's got the football. They got out of the pile. Grant Campbell makes it pretty obvious. sure how he came out of that pile with it. You can see the ball out right there. It looks like Billings may have caused that fumble, 
And then it was just a slippery football as nobody could grab a handle on it. And somehow it just leaks out. And Campbell, being opportunistic, comes up with the football for Baylor. Now, I mean, John Davis is going backwards. That ball is out. Clean. Russell with a fast call. And Ishmael Zamora did his best with it. But he had to deal as well with Justin Bigham. Let's take in with Christian Steckel. Christian? Guys, absolutely no injury for Dennis Parks down here. Coach's decision why he was not in the ball game on that last series. So that's interesting. He's out for a coach's decision, not for injury. He had three catches for 63 yards and a touchdown in the first half. This is Johnny Jefferson tripped up on his way to the end zone. Nick Uretsky just reached out and got his foot. 17 yards. I think Johnny Jefferson just does everything fast. I mean, <laughs> through the hole, around the corner. Looking to the end zone. Lynx Hawthorne has the next Baylor touchdown. That time Seth Russell didn't even see the completion. He was hit on that throw. But he laid it up. He put some touch on that one, Ben. Just laid it up and he kind of dropped the pearl right into Hawthorne's hand. Well, you know, even as they're kind of knocking on the end zone here, they're not just going to run the football in. That's just not their style. They could run this clock down. Or they've got a sizable lead. Hawthorne with that little slant and go. Got J.P. Thompson. Thompson all the way turned around. Turned around. And again, you get the running game going. All those guys defensively have to train your eyes to look at your man. And Thompson didn't do that. Thought it was going to be another running play to the quick Jefferson. They go over the top to Hawthorne for the touchdown. I don't know how you can always be right in a game against this offense as quick as they hit you like that. And the, the speed that they have at every position. First touchdown of the season for Lynx Hawthorne. Sixth touchdown of the afternoon thrown by Seth Russell. Fifty-six to seventeen. Well, Baylor could throw in a bunch of different receivers, but that guy keeps finding him. Seth Russell to Lynx Hawthorne. Fifty-six on the board for Baylor. That's six touchdown passes by Russell ties a school record. Only threw three against Lamar. That's well off his pace. So he normally. This kick is to Austin Walter, and a chance for a return. And it can't get much past the 15-yard line. They're not great field position again for Rice. And Baylor keeps pouring on the points, and that's not really a surprise. 50-plus points in a game since 2013. Yeah, nobody has more than Baylor now with 14 of those games. <laughs> well, we've, we've done a number of these Baylor games, and I'm still impressed every time I watch them, especially now that we're on the field, just the explosion they have on offense. And... I think the surprising stat there is Ohio State is up there with 50-plus points. You don't typically think that of them as a high-scoring offense. The thing about their biggest 50-plus point game was last year against TCU when they scored 61, and they needed 21 in the fourth quarter to win that game. By two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sam Stewart stays on his feet. Maybe that wasn't the greatest thing for him. Grant Campbell in there again, and those two draw a little bit. Give him a couple of yards on the forward progress. Well, I mean, Rice is hanging in there. They're going to be in everything they've got. David Bailiff has a good team. They're, they're just being out-athleted right now across the board. And they just can't get those type of players at Rice. But So everybody that's out there right now, I mean, they're just giving it a little bit extra here in this third quarter just to, you know, try to hold their own. The other players trying to wake up the crowd a little bit. On second and eight. Jackson has time, throws underneath, and completes it to James Maiden. A three-yard game. Well, Ambaldi, to your point, you know, you look at this Rice offensive line, there's only one guy that's over 300 pounds. You know, you're not gonna you're not gonna move a lot of these Baylor guys off the line of scrimmage, and you can do it with speed and kind of changing, you know, the the level of the offensive line by moving the quarterback around a little bit, but Baylor's defense has been very fast today, winning the line of scrimmage, and you're not going to win a lot of ball games and move the ball a lot, and you're not winning the trenches. Rice is two of two on third downs in this half, but just three of nine in the game on third and five. 
complete. Zach Wright is able to get across the 35-yard line. That's 16 a great throw. yards. Yeah, Brent, that was a great throw by Dreyfus Jackson because there was three receivers to his right. He just hit the one on the slant, but there wasn't a whole lot of room to get that ball in. He put it right where he needed to, a pinpoint throw to convert another third down here in the third quarter. Again, they were the top team in all of FBS on third down percentage. Their 86 total first downs were fifth most in the nation entering play today. Jackson oh, takes a shot, but he's able to launch this one downfield, and he gets the pass interference call. But boy, did he take a blast from Grant Campbell. I tell you, if nothing else, I know Dreyfus Jackson has improved every year he's been a starter here, uh, Ben, but that time he took a shot that you don't ever want to see your quarterback. Pass interference. Defense, number 19. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic. First down. Yeah, it's 18, not 19 chance wants. Well, and that's the thing that they've talked about with Dreyfus is we know that you're a tough guy. You don't have to prove anything to us, especially running the football. But you can't, as they get into conference play, lose a guy like Dreyfus as he takes shots like that. So they're trying to temper him a little bit right now, running the football. It's hard to do that throw in the football, but gutsy play by him to step into that throw. And the irony was the reason why that ball was underthrown and got the interference is because of the hit that he took. So first and ten now on the Baylor half of the field. Got a hold. John Pillman, the right tackle, got a little too handsy. Yeah, working against K.J. Smith, you're going to get a hold there on the right tackle. But one thing, you just mentioned K.J. Smith here, Ben. I, I remember coming here four years ago and talking to Phil Montgomery. He didn't have any depth at all. K. Personal Smith. foul, face mask, offense, number 55, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, still first down. Just mentioning, you know, Phil Bennett, I mean, four years ago, they didn't have depth. They've developed the depth. They've been redshirting. You know, K.J. Smith started the first week when Sean Oakman was suspended that first game. Played a very good game. Now you can see, you know, they're at least too deep across the board. But, and you get versatility with him as well because Oakman's the right defensive end. He's typically K.J. Smith, the left defensive end, defensive end. So he went over. Now he's back in his more natural position. And he's a freshman All-American last year. So you talk about depth. And they're getting plenty of depth out of these guys in the number two position. Austin Walter lost his footing for a moment. He will stay on his feet, and they'll give him forward progress out to the 40-yard line. Well, you know, as Rice really gets ready for conference play, they're 1-0 right now beating North Texas uh, last week. But they've got four running backs that they believe in that can get it done. And that's Austin Howard right there is one of them. So you're going to see a rotation of backs here depending on really down a distance. They trust the ball at this point. Second and 22 for the Owls. Three receivers bunched together. A little pump, and he got buried again. The ball is loose. Rice has gotten it back, but Dreyfus Jackson has taken another shot. Holding offense, number 55. Penalties decline. Third down. And again, we talk about that depth. We were talking about K.J. Smith earlier. Now Brian Nance at the top of your screen just beats a cut block by the running back, puts his helmet square in the back of Dreyfus, and Dreyfus can't hold on to the football. So now we're looking at a third and 37 play ball. <laughs> hey, Ben, I tell you, I, I mean, if I'm David Bailiff, I'm thinking about pulling Dreyfus Jackson. Absolutely. I mean, really, get, this, get him out of harm's way right now. He's taking far too many hits and hard hits. I know he's banged up right now and playing through it, but you might think about pulling him from this game. There was a 15-yard penalty and a now a 15-yard loss on that fumble. So third and 37. And Jackson will just have to throw it up. And that could have been picked off, but it was out of bounds. Orion Stewart made the catch, but had a foot in the white. We'll have to punt it away. And guys, coming into the game here today, 
And really all this week, Art Bryles talked about the fact that he lost his edge. The team had lost its edge. It seems like they are playing with a considerable edge here today. They haven't taken their foot off the gas. No, not at all. And, and I was surprised. And, and you don't hear a lot of head coaches you know, put the blame on, on, on himself when it comes to that sort of personality of his team. He said, hey, I lost my edge as well. And I got to get it back first before I can ask my guys to do it. And it seems like today they found that edge in the bye week. Patrick Levels nearly fell into that punt. He's lucky he didn't make contact for it. It's a 53-yard punt. Baylor, 56-17 over Rice. Touchdown grabs a school record four in the previous game against Lamar. In three here today. The shoulder pads are off. He is done. And now, Jared Stidham. Somebody they love. Here at Baylor, the true freshman, he's in a quarterback for the Baylor Bears. He's not afraid to throw the football, and on his very first play, he airs it out, and they draw the pass interference flag. Chris Platt was out there for Baylor. Right, his first pass a couple weeks ago in his college career was for a touchdown, and they don't hold back. They believe that this kid has got all of it. And they think defense. defense, number 17, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. It's well, I mean, here it is, just taking a shot right now down the field. Little play action to Johnny Jefferson, and then he just cuts this loose. And I don't know, Ben, was that a perfect spot or what? <laughs> I mean, he can really sling it. And that, I, I just, it, it's so funny to me that he comes in the game. No need to warm him up. No quick pass. No need to get him in a rhythm. Just chuck the ball down the field. Maybe could have used a little more touch on that rocket he just put in the chest of Chris Plank. <laughs> Chris Platt was a guy that Art Bryles said is ready to explode. Now, he's getting a chance to play. He took his eyes off that ball, but, I mean, you just wait your turn. Sometimes when you've got 56 on the board and sometimes when guys are injured, and then when you get your turn, you make the best of it. On second and 10, they give it to Johnny Jefferson, who's still in the game. It's just his seventh carry. But now after that seven-yard pickup, he's got 77 yards on the play. Or on the, on the game, I should say. It'll bring up third down for Baylor. Need three. And Johnny Jefferson has that. Baylor now four for five on third downs. You know, why not just come back with the same exact play, picked up big chunk yardage of seven yards, and just do the same thing? Get Jarrell Broxton coming across the line, kicking out, and get Jefferson run up the middle. Hey, Chris Platt's out there, but knocked away. A nice defensive play by Destry White. Destry White, the safety, was in perfect position on Pratt that time, and he was playing blind, blind. He was just looking at Pratt when he put his hands up. He put his hands up to match him. Nice play by Destry, a guy that we haven't really talked much about today. White, just a sophomore. One of five true freshmen last year to play for the Rice Owls. As they go back to Jefferson on the ground for four. Nice tackle that time by Womack. Playing a defensive end right there, just kind of sliding down the line of scrimmage and just grabbing Jefferson's feet. Another third down here for the Baylor offense. Jared Stidham, and a quarterback will dump it off, and Jefferson out of the backfield was wide open, an easy first down for the Bears. I think that's the first catch by a running back today, Ben, and that was a nice safety valve just coming out of the backfield on a flare. Well, and that's another part of his game that they love from Johnny Jefferson is the fact that he has great hands. They say, boy, he has really soft hands. He gives us a lot out of the backfield. We saw what he can do running the football, but he can be a three-down running back for this team. And now we see Terrence Williams in the game at running back, and he's no slouch either. Terrence Williams trying to walk that tightrope, stepped out of bounds. Williams had his first career 100-yard game against Lamar in their last outing. Got 15 on his first touch here. Well, all these guys are just big guys. We talked about the receivers, how big they are. And Terrence Williams comes in. He gives you a little bit of thunder at 6'2", 215. He's just a redshirt freshman, so he's going to grow into that body. He could become the power back for this offense. Williams again. Just a couple. He's a redshirt freshman. Right now, Baylor is substituting offensive linemen like the way some teams substitute wide receivers. This is one way that you develop depth, just getting guys out on the field, getting them some reps right here in the third quarter of the game. 
Yeah, there's still a lot of football to be played. As Terrence Williams thought he was going to take a big hit. D.J. Banks went underneath and took his legs out from under. Sometimes, you know, you have to be smart when you're a defensive back. D.J. Banks, we've seen him, you know, struggle in coverage against Corey Coleman and Katie Cannon, but sometimes just go low. Preserve yourself. Lift up. Play another play. <laughs> yeah, and I get the sense right here that Kendall's going to get a little impatient and take a shot in the end zone. But there was movement and another penalty. All start. All start. Offense, number eight, five-yard penalty, third down. Wide receiver, Ishmael Zamora. One of those receivers you just mentioned, Ben, Ishmael Zamora, six foot four, 220. Quan Jones on the other side, 6'5", 220. I mean, big targets for either quarterback to throw to. Yeah, big targets and speed. All these guys have speed, and that's why it's so hard to match up against them because... You can put a smaller corner on him, and they'll just jump over the top of you. You get a bigger corner on him, and they'll run right past you. The late handoff of Terrence Williams right up the middle. First down and goal coming up. One thing about these backs, man, just watching from the end zone that we're seeing is how quick their feet are. In the hole, I mean, they're gaining yards, but yet their, their ability to make people miss is... There's some more say he stepped out tried to launch himself towards that pylon but foot may have touched the line you see Ishmael Zamora right there just standing out there at that exposition way outside the numbers just waiting for the play to come in going you're gonna give me another chance to finish this drive the previous plays under further review you know what that might be a touchdown out. hit the pylon it is he never actually stepped out of bounds, and with a back-bending stretch from midair, he got that pylon. Guys, I, I only saw the replay once, but it looks like his, both feet are inbounds as he leaps. Right there, he's inbounds. All right, right there, he's in. That effort. He, he clips that pylon. That's a touchdown. Yeah. Pylon goes all the way up and all the way around, so any part of that pylon is in the end zone. He has control of the football as he hits the pylon. To me, that's an unbelievable effort. We mentioned he's 6'4", 220. Look how he stretches out here and how he extends the field. His body is two feet outside the, number, outside the lines, and he's still scoring. They're extending the width of the field the way that they can stretch. And this may not come as a surprise he to you guys. from about 9 to 10 feet away from the goal line and used that big frame and that wingspan to just clip the pylon. Again, we can't overstress how athletic these guys are and After the problems further they review, face with these defenses. The runner did not step out of bounds. Doe hit the pylon with the football. It's a touchdown. Look at the smile on Art Bryles' face. It's an 8-yard touchdown catch, Ishmael Zamora. That's the first of his career and a memorable one for him. Well, yeah, bumped out right to his resume reel. I mean, that was an unbelievable effort. All he needed to do after that is maybe sell Judge Judy that that was a touchdown. You know, you got to be a little more emphatic. Like, I, I made this effort. I did hit the pylon. They know the rules, and they have the athletic ability to take advantage of it. Trying to tack on the 63rd point of the football game. Chris Callahan will make it official. Ishmael Zamora, a high school state championship in the hurdles. Probably not a big shock after watching a play like this. He takes off from the two, and he gets that pylon. Zamora, first career touchdown catch. And an athletic play to make it come true. This big, powerful receiver, dressed in nine games last year, didn't actually play. Took the red shirt, so now they've got this year and three more. Ishmael Zamora. Hale are certainly not hurting for wide receivers. As we get the football back. At their own 25 as Austin Walter takes the knee. As we take a look at our Academy Sports Right Stuff key player for Rice, and it's Dreyfus Jackson, who you see with the headset on because it appears he has taken enough hits today. Five sacks. Tyler Stelling will be the new quarterback 
for the Rice Owls and guys you were calling for it on that last series and David Bailiff agrees. Yeah, Baldy, you, you said it, you called it right away that he just took too many hits. I mean, even when he tucked and ran with the football, was taking a lot of hits, and then he got into this third quarter. Too many hits on some throws, some some hard hits, yeah. direct hits in the middle of the back and all that stuff. So I think it's smart to pull. He's smart because he got to, they need him for a conference play. I mean, they still have every you know every goal out there to win Conference USA this year. It starts next week against Western Kentucky, who's a tough foe. They need him help. Hand it off, to Sam Stewart. Tyler Stelling, a redshirt junior from Spring, Texas, saw action against Texas in that game. He had seven of eight passes for 95 yards and a touchdown. That's his only action this year. Well, and just talking to David Bailiff this week, I mean, his concern was, look, we got to protect this guy. We we can't, you know, we can't let him take those kind of extra hits. And today, you know, he's just competitive, just trying to make some plays. And look, the protection broke down. Things happen. They went up against a good defense. It's just a good move. I know he's disappointed, but it's the right move for, for Rice. Selling's first pass is complete out there to Alaka. Temi Alaka escapes. Knocked out shy of the 40-yard line by Teon Selks. Well, and much like Baylor's doing now, getting Stidham some reps because they know that it's a long, grueling season in the Big 12. It's a long, grueling season for these guys and Conference USA as well. So these snaps are invaluable for Stelling to get in there, even though he got he's in there because quarterback Dreyfus is getting hit. They want to protect him, but he's going to make the most out of these snaps. Western Kentucky next week for Rice. And they are in Boca to take on Florida Atlantic. The only time they leave the state of Texas at all this season, Sam Stewart wrapped up by K.J. Smith to end our third quarter of action here at McLean Stadium in Waco. Baylor's offense has been putting on a clinic 63 points, 630 yards. We've got 15 minutes to go. 63-17 lead over the Rice Owls at a Conference USA. Rice has the ball. The Baylor 38. Second and eight. The backup quarterback Tyler Stelling in the game replacing Dreyfus Jackson who was sacked five times. And that pass a little too high for Connor Sella, the tight end. Tight ends were a big part of the offense last week, guys, and we haven't really seen them at all impact the game today. No, they really haven't. And the thing that I just noticed is Stelling picking himself up off the ground. So they take out Dreyfus because they want to limit the hits. And Stelling comes in here. It's the same story. You know, you can't throw the football and have a lot of time. But with this offensive line against this Baylor defensive line, you're going to get hit darn near every play. Third and eight. A little shuffling on the defensive line as Baylor showing blitz. And here they come. He just got rid of it. It is incomplete, and he oh, took man. a shot. And so did Sam Stewart. He took a shot and went right into Sam Stewart, who was the running back on the play, and they both went down. Stelling is up. Stewart is still down. And they've done this a number of times. Just kind of bring an all-out zero blitz, bring one more than you can block, and it's Tion Sells that comes off the corner. And you Ow. said it, Baldy. They ran right into each other. Quarterback on running back. And that's and Phil that's Bennett a, needs to be sending any safety blitzes here up 63 to 17. Both players got hit nearly the same way. Tayon Sells bent the back of Tyler Stelling, and then Stelling bent the back of Sam Stewart. It just a just a collision, you know, just a pileup right there. And Sam Stewart, he's just He's just protecting the front side of the quarterback. He has no idea what's coming behind him like that. Well, and Baldy, you as an offensive lineman, I'm sure have been in that situation before. You're yeah. engaged with somebody, and somebody comes from behind, either clips you low or hits you high, and you kind of get never bent over it. backwards. You know, sometimes are the worst injuries because you can't protect yourself. It's, you know, it's, it just catch you off guard. You can't brace your fall, and you don't know what's coming. As they tend to Sam Stewart, we go to Los Angeles and Jenny Tapp for a game break. Jenny? Well, Brendan, thanks. A big game over on Fox number three, TCU visiting Texas Tech. Patrick Mahomes finds Jakeem Grant for the 45-yard strike. The Red Raiders take the 21-16 lead over the Horn Frogs in the second quarter. Fellas, back to you. 
Are you a little surprised it's only 21-16? <laughs> I tell you what, after after Cliff Kingsbury sent that team to Arkansas last week and beat a good SEC team, uh, I'm worried about TCU's defense here, Ben. I mean, they're so beat up right now. They've lost, you know, starters to injuries, to suspensions right now. They're just very thin and playing a lot of young players. Well, and they came in as an inexperienced defense to start the year, and I believe they have five guys out for the season that were former starters. So... They're going to do their best to shuffle some young guys in there, and, and that could be the reason why you see Texas Tech now, although they have a great offense, fantastic offense. Patrick could, Mahomes, the quarterback, big-time player, and the right decision by Cliff Kingsbury to, to have him win that job. Fourth and eight, Rice will have to punt. Bad snap, but scooped up nicely by Faramon, who's trying to place this one inside the five. And he'll put it inside the ten, down to the seven-yard line. From the director of An Inconvenient Truth comes the new movie. He named me Malamala. Malala captured the world's attention when she was shot by the Taliban for standing up for what she believes. Now you can experience her amazing story and discover how one voice can change the world. Don't miss He Named Me Malala. Rated PG-13 only in theaters October 9th. Jared Stidham back in the game for his second series. Two for four on that first one. He threw that touchdown pass to Ishmael Zamora. He was five of six on the season. Coming into this game, he saw some action in SMU, and there's a nice grab by Chris Platt. And he's a track star, but can't get out to the 30-yard line. <laughs> A big play to get him out from the back of their own end zone, but Volley, I know it's just the start of the fourth quarter, but do you see Baylor pulling back a little bit and actually practicing their four-minute offense? <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> yeah. you, I mean, at some point in time, they're going to have to start doing that. Well, I think so. If you go back to the Cotton Bowl against Michigan State, it would have been a good idea to take a lot of time off the clock and not let the Spartans you know, do what they did to them. Terrence Williams on the run, and it goes for 13. They pick up, you know, Brendan, watching this team, they pick up chunk yardage so fast. I mean, deep in their territory, here they are almost at midfield right now. The first down play gets them out to the 48. Juan Jones on the catch, Derek Brown on the tackle. You know, and I think with this offense to them, even if they their thought process was a four-minute offense to run the clock out, preserve the win, to them, those short little passes is like a run to them. It is. But what happens is they have such skilled players on the outside, they make one or two guys miss, and they take it to the house, and they're kind of negates running time off the clock. All these guys, Pratt and Jones, all these guys in there right now, they want to score like Coleman and Cannon. Here is a chance to get way down the field as the pass complete to Quan Jones. Brennan, what, I mean, this looks like a basketball team out here. The size that they have at these skilled positions, Quan Jones at 6'5", we mentioned it. I mean, he's just so long. Look at this throw by Stidham, right in stride. And he saw what they've been exploiting. That's kind of the way their offense works. They get three receivers to one side. One receiver a week. And if you don't rotate a safety over on that weak side, all you have to do is ask a receiver to win on the inside and will de we'll deliver the ball accurately on sort of a slant, a skinny post. It's been working all game long. And it's kind of the, the blueprint to this offense for big chunk yardage. Lake clock running down. They just get it off and give it to Terrence Williams. And he will barrel his way forward. Guys, I don't know what you're talking about. That was the fifth play of the drive. It's really a long drive for Baylor. <laughs> Just five plays so far, and they're marching right back down towards the red zone. It's not what they like to do. They like to score fast. We've seen how many drives they've had today and throughout Art Brow's career under two minutes. That's how they want to put the pressure on the opposition. Score quickly and as often as you can. to Terrence Williams won't go for much but Baylor who came into the game averaging 754 yards guys now over 700 again today remember when it used to be 500 yards was the measuring <laughs> stick on a great day then it was 600 now it's 700 and it's going to go to 800 yeah. and it's like a it's like an auction <laughs> don't isn't say it? that don't say that as a defensive guy I don't like to hear that we told, we, we told Phil Bennett that his coach doesn't care about defense, man. He wants to score, be the first one to 56 or 70 or whatever. On third and four, Terrence Williams got to the 20. It'll bring up fourth down. 
Well, to your point, we talked about that TCU game last year. You said, you know, are you a little upset that the defense gave up so many points? He's like, we won, right? Won. Yeah. No. We, we, had, we win. As long as we win a Big 12 championship. Big 12 championship because of that game. And they're going for it on fourth down. And a punch thrown there at the end of the run. Wow. Ishmael Wilson, the backup left tackle, just took a pretty good swing there at the end of that play. Well, that'll get you thrown right out of the game. The ruling on the field is that the runner was short of the line to gain. The ball goes over on downs. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, Baylor number 68, 15-yard penalty from the dead ball spot, first and 10 Rice, first unsportsmanlike conduct foul on number 68. Well, and you called it, Brendan. I mean, you can't come into the game and take these reps and use it like that where you get a personal foul for throwing a punch. Baylor walks down the field. Over 700 yards of offense for Baylor was a nice comfy lead at 63-17. Still early stages, fourth quarter. Brandon Burke up here in the booth. Brian Baldinger, Ben Lieber down at field level. Tyler Stelling is the quarterback for Rice again as Baylor turned the ball over on down just the third time in this game. They have not scored at the end of their drive. So take a look at that fourth down rush again. Yeah, you'll see at the top of your screen, it's the left tackle at the end of this play. A little skirmish there. And you can see at the very end, a little bit of a right hook as he took. Just inexcusable, especially in a game like this. You just got to get some reps, work yeah. on your own technique. That's all you should be worried about. You know, just getting as many reps, get out of the field. You know, just take what you've been doing in practice, try to take it to the game field. go for Austin Walter. Raquan Davis got in there in a hurry to knock him back. Well, and again, I think it's this Baylor defensive line that's been the story of the game for them defensively. And even with some of the backups in there, they're doing a lot of the same thing. They're winning the line of scrimmage, pushing this Rice offensive line back, disrupting everything, making the running backs have to change direction, stop their feet, and allowing the rest of the defense to get tackles for loss on the other side of the line of scrimmage. Ben, to your point, that was the 11th TFL today for the Baylor defense. They had just set up shop in the Rice backfield. And Stelling Man. able to throw that into the back of a lineman. But it, the fall that he just took, nobody could complete a pass from the angle that he just get hit at. I mean, he's dropped back to about, I mean, he's been hit on almost every time he's been dropped back so far. And K.J. Smith, just like we talked about earlier in this game, he gets in. He was a freshman All-American last year, and he just uses that long arm, getting that leverage, great body angle, and getting some push and causing Stelling to have an errant throw right in the back of his own guy. Fairmont will have to punt it away. And the fans that are left here, the diehards, are just excited about another opportunity to watch this Baylor offense. Links Hawthorne calls for the fair catch at the 22. That's where Baylor gets the football. Hi. My Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price every day. Buy Ford. Visit your local Texas Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. A lot of fans here in Waco streaming across the Umphrey Bridge back to the mainland on the Brazos River. Lane Stadium and the Baylor Bears with a big comfy lead and the football and Terrence Williams just ran over Destry White and refusing to go down until he gets that first down. 
Terrence Williams is their fourth string running back. They're missing Devin Chase with a hamstring injury today. But how about this Baylor offense? Three straight games with 700-plus yards. Second team since 96 to do it. The only other team in 2013 was Baylor. They did it in their second, third, and fourth games of the season that year. Well, and they have 713 right now, and we still have half of the fourth quarter left to play, so they could eclipse almost 800 just running the football with Big Terrence Williams. And, you know, Brendan, the, the key today was for Seth Russell, you know, to take care of the football, and he did. He didn't turn the ball over today. He didn't uh, throw any interceptions today. You know, six touchdown passes on 17 attempts is unheard of on any level, no matter who the opposition is. They run it right back with Williams. Hey, Baldy, we just saw a shot. There's big Laquan McGowan. But we just saw a shot of Art Bryles, Kendall Bryles, and Jeff Levy all on the field without headsets on. Baldy, are you calling the plays down there? Well, I, I don't think, I, I think you could call them right now. <laughs> you know, I mean, I think their day is done. They know what this offense is. I think defensively, they made a statement today as they get ready for conference play against Texas Tech next week. Yeah, I, I think they want to see how Seth was going to respond. They did have the bye week, but can you put those four turnovers against Lamar behind you? You know, what do they have as they get the conference play? How headstrong and confident are they going to have? Are they going to be in him as he leads them into conference play? And I think you saw it today. I mean, very calm, collected, anticipating throws, accurate passes. He had some passes that were flat out unbelievable. Lasers. I mean, la lasers would have had to be, but then touch when he needed the touch on the throw. And again, you mentioned this defense. I think that, to me, is is the key and the thing that they learned from this last non-conference game is this defense played sound fundamentally. They tackled well. They were physical up front, and they brought it really the whole game. Stidham running the football gets to midfield. And guys, if you were just going to look at the score at the end of this game, you're going to see Rice put up 17 points. What you're not going to realize is that the only two times Rice put the ball in the end zone is because the drive started on the 24-yard line. Yeah, you got a kickoff return, set up one drive, and turnover on another two short field touchdowns and they scored a field goal a 37 yard field goal on their first possession to start the football game that's it for the rice offense against this baylor defense they have done extremely well today they put the ball in zamora's hands and he's tripped up but another first down for baylor Brendan Burke up here in the booth. You guys have been down on the field the entire game, getting a different perspective. We've almost seen the entire thing. Your thoughts on the vantage point? Well, and I think, Brendan, you were talking about just the defense. You know, they had a short field to work with early on. That's how Rice has scored. That just drives the point home, I think, how good this defense played today. And we saw it firsthand. We saw this defensive front penetrating being disruptive, all those tackle for losses, and this defense has been swarming to the football all game long. And I thought, uh, they, you know, they, they worked on a lot of pressures today. This is from different angles. We saw Taylor Young coming from the linebacker. We saw safeties coming. We saw A-gap pressure. So I thought they got a chance to work on a lot of things. Well, and that's kind of the mark of Phil Bennett defense. He's going to gamble. Sometimes it burns him. Other times, he'll bring a zero blitz into the field, bringing one more guy than you can block, and it causes big plays and most likely turnovers because you're hitting a guy before he's even ready to get hit. And they have so many returning starters. Their whole defensive line right now, returning starters from a year ago. So these guys have been in these fights. They know this division. They know this conference. Uh, I think that's where the difference can be for Baylor this year. They're just riding Terrence Williams right now as he continues to power through. And, and guys, we, we saw Corey Coleman on the touchdowns in the first half. How about the quiet 158 yards from Shock Linwood this afternoon? It was quiet. It but, was. But he doesn't. But one guy doesn't bring Shock Linwood down. He guy, that guy spins and jumps, and he's got tremendous balance. He stays on his feet as well as anybody. Well, and they've been getting the blocking. I mean, on the one touchdown run, Gus Penny leading up in the hole great leverage to kick the defender out and he didn't have to do much he just read that block that's an easy block for running back so this offensive line even the tight ends doing a fantastic job as they're in the backfield being the lead blockers so you know not to take anything away from him but the whole team offensively was just on all cylinders they were sharp. you know you want that coming off a of bye week you want to come back sharp and i think they did Quan jones on that last catch pick up the first down the breakdown for Baylor's offense, which is right now at 756 yards. 390 on the ground, 366 through the air. Terrence Williams will add to that total on the ground. And put him over 400 yards. No, I just think it's interesting, Brendan, as we watch Jared Stidham get the signals from the sideline. And 
as they get ready for Texas Tech next week. He was thought to be going to Texas Tech. Reversed his decision, decided to come to Baylor. I'm sure that would be a big storyline as they get ready for this next week's game. Yeah, our Bryles said they were, they were surprised they got him. One of the reasons the connection that Bryles has as a former head coach at Stephenville High School where Jared Stidham was an All-American. I think the early offer when Stidham was a freshman <laughs> probably <laughs> swayed him a little bit. Hey, these guys are serious, man. These guys are investing in me early. And like you said, with that connection with Bryles at Stephenville, you know, I, I'm surprised that he was surprised because it sounds like a lock to me. Flag on the play on this last run from Terrence Williams. And it's going back against Baylor. But Stidham graduated early from Stephenville High School. Enrolled at Baylor in January. Personal foul. Fans in the face. Offense number 68. 15-yard penalty from previous spots. Replay first down. That's Ishmael Wilson again. Got a personal foul on the last drive for a right hook. And now he has hands to the face. So very undisciplined play by your backup left tackle. Ben, you mentioned that... Uh, and Phil Bennett mentioned to us yesterday that they need to start working on a four-minute offense. I don't know if a lot of people understand what that is and what that means. We should talk about that after this play. Terrence Williams gets back to about the 25-yard line. Fox Sports Supports is proud to team up with Boys and Girls Clubs of America. Boys and Girls Clubs help young people to reach their full potential as productive, caring, and responsible citizens through programs that promote character and leadership, education, healthy lifestyles, and more. For more information, visit foxsportsupports.com. Well, you know, the four-minute you're seeing exe executed perfectly right now. It's just run the football. If you're going to throw it short, maybe screen some things out on the edges, it's basically a run, but you want to run the clock out. You run four minutes. You don't want the opposition to touch the ball in the last four minutes of the game. You Absolutely. Just, and to preserve the lead and, and run that clock out. And a lot of times last year, they didn't do that. They stayed aggressive. Uh, it kind of hurt them against TCU and, and especially against Michigan State. Yep. Uh, but that's what they have to work on. Football is all situations, as you and I know. And in four minutes, especially with an offense like this, you have to work on that in game. Third and 12 coming up. This is the 14th play of the drive, guys. By far their longest drive. And again, they have punted once. They have fumbled once. And they have turned the ball over on downs once. Everything else a touchdown for these guys. Stidham has to keep it. He needs 12. Not past the first would-be tackler. And he won't get the first down, which was at the five-yard line. Well, we just heard it firsthand right here. Kendall Bryles is yelling at Quan Jones, block 20, block 20. Yeah. And Quan didn't get the relay, and he didn't block the right guy. And that guy's the end up but pushing him out of bounds. So it's yeah. great perspective to hear the coaches yelling at the players. It's a great perspective, and you can realize that you can practice these plays all you want. Sometimes it's that last-second reminder from the sideline that determines the success of a play. Fourth and two. Chris Callahan apparently gets enough work on the extra points. They won't bring him in here. Terrence Williams. He needed two. He got them all. Touchdown, Baylor. Extra point away from 70. Well, you can just see how tired and defeated this Rice defense is. I, I understand that a lot of these guys are the backup players, but, you know, there's just not a lot left in them. And you get a big bruising running back that just keeps mashing on you, and you got to make an open field tackle. That's hard on anybody. It is. I mean, it's demoralizing at a certain point. And, uh, you know, right now, Baylor is just taking advantage of that. Uh, almost no matter who touches the football, uh, they're all having success. Extra point makes it 70. Terrence Williams had his first career 100-yard game against Lamar. He has his second and his first career touchdown here this afternoon against Rice. Triple lead for Baylor as they now have hit 70 points. Their highest production of the season in terms of number of points. Put up 66 two weeks ago against Lamar. Of course, Baylor coming in off their only bye week of the season and are a week away from taking on Texas Tech in Dallas to start Big 12 playing. This one into the end zone for Austin Walter. Hey, I'm up here in the
the booth and you guys are that's just not fair as well in our turning point our ally bank turning point of the game four unanswered touchdowns early on today guys but yeah, I mean, that's it, it was the Corey Coleman show. I mean, watching it firsthand, you see Shock Linwood just easy up the middle, just oh, even turned, turned it down at the end. But again, this Corey Coleman, Coleman was unbelievable, making athletic plays all over the field, and just so much speed. Yeah. Gets up and goes. What ball do you call it? The giddy up, the Texas giddy up. Look at that. He can turn a corner now. Don't give him too much space on that sideline. He'll, he'll walk the tightrope. Rice has the football. On their own 25. Again, it is back on quarterback Tyler Stelling in the game. They hand it off to Derek Diller. One of the four backs that Rice has to offer. He gets four yards. It's the sixth time in the last three years that Baylor has put up 70 plus points in a game. Yes, some of them were against FCS opponents, but this guy's it's a quality opponent, Rice. I think that you look at the score and go, well, Rice can't be very good. They're not a bad team. They're one of the favorites to come out of the West in Conference USA. Yeah, and they're a very well-coached football team. And, you know, sometimes you can take all that coaching and execution that you think is, uh, is sound, and you go against just a bigger, more physical team, and sometimes that brawn is just going to win out, and that's what happened today, you know. Rice came in, and they had a good game plan. They didn't get the tempo early on, had to take two early timeouts, and I think that was just kind of a killer for them as they, you want to get out the gate. Normally you have a bunch of scripted plays where guys can play free, and they couldn't get in a rhythm. And then Baylor, you give them you give them an inch, they're going to take a mile, and they did a bunch, you know, on a bunch of those big plays. And once you get behind on this team with this defense that playing the way it is, and it's hard to come back. They give this to Derek Dillard. And he gets out to the Derek 39. But it's just such a jump in competition for Rice to take on one of the elite programs in the country. It's, it's, Rice isn't alone here. I mean, we've seen graphics today where nobody has scored more 50-point-plus games than Baylor in the country over the last four years. Second and seven coming up. For the Owls, Derek Dillard still in the backfield. Tyler Stelling getting his most extensive work of the season at quarterback. And he's just been handing it off mostly. He's one for four through the air. Jamie Jacobs getting in the way of Dillard on that run. Third down coming up. I think they're just going to let this thing run out, guys. They don't have to do it. They have seen enough. Time to shake hands. Pick up the hymn books, you know, but... Uh... Baylor has come into week three and made a statement heading into conference play. They put up 70 on offense, and guys, the defense was strong as well. Your thoughts from your vantage point today? Well, I think, you know, the, the key for me of us being down here was the opportunities to watch Corey Coleman, not only his athleticism, but his interaction with us. After that one touchdown, while well, he's beating his chest saying, I'm the best receiver, I'm the best.